everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. So thank you all for coming this evening. We really appreciate that everyone in the public showed up. We really appreciate all the input. So thank you so much. Um, I also want to mention that Nicole Taub is also with us, she's the Chief of Staff, so she is, is, is attending the meeting as well. So we're ready to open the meeting. Um, and we're going to open with attendance of the committee. Kay Young. Here. David Cunningham. Here. Julia Flaherty. Here. Peter Herbst. Here. Justine Wong. Here. Aaron Joyce. Present. Shelley North. Here. Joseph, oh, sorry, Elizabeth Page. Here. Joseph Reynolds. Here. And Raina Rubin. Okay, great. So uh, we'll open it up for member and staff announcements. Melissa, do you have any announcements? Uh, no announcements um, Just drawing people's attention to our next meeting, uh, which will be <laughs> December 15th in this room. That will be a three board meeting, Master Plan Steering Committee, uh, the Planning Board, and also the Town Council. So folks that are following us will be back here on the 15th. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, and do we have an, a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting, which was October 3rd? I'll make a motion to um, approve the minutes from the last meeting. Second. Thank you, Shelley. Okay, so I'm going to hand it over. We have a long night ahead of us. We creating... need a vote on that. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, we'll we have all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? No. Okay. Great. Okay. So I'm going to turn it over to Jen, who is going to establish the ground rules and, and take it from here. So thank you, Jen. Yeah. Thank you so much, everyone, and thank you for your patience. I know I was running late today, but we're ready to go, right? Hopefully we'll get you on time. So um, tonight is a really important night, as you all know, and we're really excited to work through the draft vision statement with the committee so that we can, at the end of the night, hopefully all agree on what the draft vision statement should say. And so we have um, a few things I want to cover before we really get into the details. If you look at your agenda, which I'm hoping everyone in the audience also has, you'll see that we've structured this in a very specific way and the reason we've done this is to allow adequate time for each section of the vision. And we're going to start with core themes one, two, and three. And I'm going to show them on the screen so that everybody can see them while the committee is talking about them. Um, and what we're going to do first is have committee comment. I know that you've all been thinking about this vision statement and doing homework, looking at the engagement results, um, that we sent out to you last week and thinking of your on your own Do you feel that you want to see any revisions considered? And so what we'd first like to hear is from the committee Are there any revisions for you know, we'll start with core theme one and We'll go around and ask for any ideas you have for revisions um, Then what we're going to do and then of course you can discuss that as well and then what we'll do is we'll open the floor for public comment and ask the community members if they have any revisions they'd like to see for that component of the vision statement and if they have any reactions to revisions recommended by the committee members. And then we'll turn it back to the committee and ask you to make some decisions after hearing from the community members and hearing your colleagues, of course, on the committee what revisions would you like to see? And we're going to attempt to come to consensus. Um, sometimes that's not possible. So I'm going to go over um, 
this fist to five voting method, which is our backup plan. If by the time we get to that third component where we're talking, you guys talk first, these folks share their thoughts, and then the floor goes back to you, is if we're feeling like there's not easy consensus at that point, what I'd like to do is implement this process. Has anyone, raise your hand if you've used this fist to five process before or ever heard of it? Okay, great, thank you. Okay, good. So it's pretty easy. It's a way, rather than just saying, I agree, I disagree, it gives you some shades of gray and you don't all necessarily have to verbalize all of that. Um, so it's actually quite an efficient way to take, it's kind of like a straw poll, but it's a little bit more nuanced. And so what you do is, if we get to one section and we're trying to make a decision on a phrase or a sentence or adding something in or taking something out, what I'm gonna ask you to do is raise your hand um, and what you do, and I gave this to you all so you have it in front of you in case you forget, but basically it's the fist is, there's no way I cannot live with this change. Um, a total agreement is just raising all five fingers. Like, yes, I love this. I, I'm in total agreement of this. And then the in-between is, you know, kind of the shades of gray. So we have one, I really want to talk about this. Two is, I have some reservations, but maybe I could live with it. I don't actually need to talk about it. I just want to express that I have some reservations. And then three is, well, I'm actually okay with it. You know, I, I don't love it, but I'm okay with it. And four is, sounds good. You might not be in total agreement, but it sounds pretty good. So if you really want to talk about something, it's not a deal breaker, but you want to talk about it, it's raising the one, the one finger. So does this method, we're not going to do this immediately, but at some point through the course of our conversation, I may want to implement this method um, to help get us over any sticking points. Does just the method make sense to you in terms of how we want to do it? Okay, great. All right. So the other thing I'd like to go over before we really dive in is I have some ground rules. If you've been involved with a facilitator or a mediator in the past, these will look very familiar to you. There's not something that I created. Um, I have the footnote on the bottom. They're from Community, um, sorry, Community Ca a Conversation Cafe, which is a pretty interesting site if anybody's interested. But basically the ground rules are Keep an open mind. You may not agree with everything everybody says in this committee, but also uh, in the community. And I'd really like everyone, you know, all of us, to be, um, you know, listen to each other, be respectful. There's going to be a, probably a variety of points of view, and that's okay. That's why we're here tonight. The second is acceptance. We're going to try to suspend judgment on other people's points of view. Everybody has their own perspective because we don't walk in each other's shoes, right? We all come from different places. And so we're not going to judge each other, each other personally based on an opinion that maybe we disagree with. Um, I also would love for people to come to the discussion with some curiosity. I'm actually coming with a lot of curiosity to hear what people are saying, where they're coming from. And I would just really hope that we can all be curious about each other. Um, and really we're looking to try to understand, discover. Um, speaking from your heart and personal experience is important, being sincere. And then brevity. And this, while this may not be the most important thing on this list, it may be the most um, tactical thing on this list. We will, um, we really would like you to keep your points, everybody included, the, the community members as well as the committee. We have three hours tonight which maybe that seems like a long time, but actually this is a really meaty discussion and we may just use the entire three hours, minus the 10 minutes that I was late for. Um, and so what we may do is implement a no more than two minute rule and that will be at the chair's discretion. Um, we may not start that way, but I think that if everyone keeps their comments relatively brief and succinct, we're not looking for stories you know, we're not looking for um, anything lengthy, but just giving your opinion and maybe your reasons for that will be very much appreciated. All right. And then I just like to say, you know, you're all here, including you all, because you actually really care about this community. You're not apathetic, um, which is awesome. 
and that's why it's really amazing to see that we have this great turnout today. We've had great turnouts at the public forums and the focus groups and many other committee meetings, which is not always the case in every community. So I think you should feel really good about that. Even though you may not agree with 100% of what everybody says, you're all here because you really care about this community and you're all doing a real service to the, to the town as well. Everybody here who's committing their time as well as the folks that take their evening out to come here are doing a real service to the town of Braintree. So I just want to commend you ahead of time for doing that tonight. So I did give you this um, participation ground rules as a handout if you want to refer to it. And um, you had this uh, homework sheet, which you don't have to turn in, but perhaps it was helpful to think about all the different um, ways of thinking about an issue. So hopefully you found that helpful. Again, it was totally um, up to you whether you use it or not, but I just, it's called the visiting the four poles. All right. And then you also got that ag aggregated engagement summary, which is pretty meaty. We tried to really boil it down to the essence um, and make everything as quantitative as possible. Um, we also gave you the raw cell sheet so you can actually see every single comment, how we coded things. And um, we're not going to talk about that tonight, not because we don't want to. It's because we want to get to hear from you all and you all about the vision statement. All right. So what I'm going to be doing is walking you through the core themes. And we're going to just start our committee discussion. Um, and so 6.15 to 7.10, we have three themes we'd like to cover. Core theme one, and you can see it on the screen here, is stronger protection of natural resources and expanded conservation areas that foster community connection to the natural world. That's how the, the, the core theme topic stands at this moment. The second core theme we're gonna talk about in this chunk of time is right now it stands as careful growth policies that promote local business, strat strategically repurposed sites, and vibrant commercial squares. And then the third core theme we're gonna talk about in this segment is upgraded roadways and traffic infrastructure that are safe, reduce neighborhood cut through traffic, and help residents get around the town and region. I'm not gonna read all the details of the description of those, but certainly you are welcome and encouraged to wordsmith and comment on anything that's written in each of these core themes. And what I'd like to do is just start with the committee on core theme one, and we're gonna go um, with the committee on all three core themes. We're gonna get all of your suggestions on any changes you'd like to see for core theme one, two, and three, and then we'll open it up to the community to comment on any of those three themes, core one, two, and three core themes. Um, so with that as my intro, does this method and format make sense in terms of what we're asking of you all? Okay, all right. great. So what I'd like to do is start with that core theme one, which is regard regarding mostly natural resources and conservation areas. And I would just open it up to any members of the committee. Um, and uh, Jennifer, I'm sorry, Chair Wadlin, I forget the protocol. Are they supposed to say their name before they speak? I will say the name. So if somebody wants to speak, they will. From the public. Um, no, or no, if somebody on the committee, just for the belt, on the for committee. the BCAM. So if, if someone wants to speak, so why don't we see, maybe we'll just go, go around the horn and, oops, and, and, and everyone can add in what they want to add in or take out and, um, and I'll say their name to start. Perfect. Okay. So should we start with Peter and just go around? Peter, do you have any updates, changes to core theme one? Just a comment that the historic resource element of it is kind of buried in the text, and I'm wondering if it should be incorporated in the initial sentence. Can, can you repeat that? I didn't hear that. Uh, 
preservation of historic resources. Oh, okay. Okay, so where are you suggesting we put that? I'm wondering whether that should be included in the, uh, that bolded topic sentence. Okay, oh, the first sentence, stronger protection of natural resources and expanded conservation areas, that sentence? Yeah. Okay. So the natural world and the preservation of historic resources. Okay, I think I understand. So you're looking at preservation of historic resources, which is currently at the end of that um, description and really moving that up into the, the top paragraph or into the, the, the actual head, the title of the core theme? Uh, the title. Into the title. So while you're talking, I'm just gonna make a bunch of comments. I'm not actually gonna revise yet, um, but you'll see that I'm noting your comments um, as a comment on the document. Um, David, I think, um, should we just go around in I order? I think so. David, do you have changes and updates? Um, I don't have any specific uh, changes and updates, but I'm aware of some suggestions that have been made that I agree with, so I'll wait until those suggestions are made. Shelley? <clears throat> um, when we're talking about this, the only thing I'm not seeing in that is about the neighborhoods canopies. I know that's been a touch point in some of the neighborhoods where trees have been being taken down. Um, if that might be someplace else, but I, I didn't see it someplace else. So tree planting program to build a camp. So I, didn't, I took that as more like Washington Street or the main streets, but if that means neighborhoods it's not clear what that means. So, so I'd like to include neighborhoods. It. Yeah. I know Bell does have a program, but not everybody knows about it, and it should be added. Erin. Thank you. Um, just to piggyback on the historic resources, this is the only section core theme that would deal with historic resources. Is that correct? I believe so. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think it would be nice to see a little bit more guidance on what historic um, preservation means, um, just thinking about moving forward, whether that's, um, you know, just pertains to historic districts or if, you know, we should, you know, explore. I know some communities do have, like, architectural review boards to kind of try to keep historical looks to buildings. Um, or something like that. I don't know if anybody else has any other suggestions, but it might be nice to kind of put that more prominently. I agree with um, Member Herbst on that. And then I just had a question on the last sentence. Um, what does it mean to protect the embodied energy in existing buildings? What's that goal? It means really to recognize that an existing building um, already used resources and it already, um, you know, when you demolish something, you're basically um, losing what you've already spent to create that. Um, so it's a term that a lot of historic preservationists use to kind of advocate for preservation in, itself, in and of itself as a sustainability measure in reusing existing buildings over building new and really just recognizing the value of that. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that again supports if you did break out into like more of like how we might look to promote the preservation of historic, maybe expand on that a little bit. I originally was thinking it was quite literally energy, thinking of sustainability from an energy perspective. So, um, but no, I think overall this is a well, a well worded um, section. Thank you. Julia. Thank you. So. What generally, one of the comments that I had about the core themes and the way that they're structured is that I would like for them each to begin with a strong action verb, because I think what we're trying to do is develop habits that will, that will continue in perpetuity rather than particular achievements. So uh, the, the first item that I, I wanted to suggest is that rather than saying we'll have stronger protection, I think it would, I think we'd strengthen it to say conserve natural resources. I also, and then each of the following items, like I have the same kind of comment, but I'll reserve those for later. 
Um, I think it is very wise to include historic in the overall like heading because it seems like it's overlooked. So I definitely agree with that. And um, I think it would make sense. There's two other things. One is I would add access to existing conservation areas because it seems like in the conversations that I had with residents across the board, they were very often under-informed about conservation areas that we do have. And it is a very realistic achievement that we can work towards to make sure that people know more about things like Cranberry Pond or the town forest. Where do you park? Where are the trails? How long are they? What can you expect along the way? Like this kind of information is what gives people access when they know what to expect and where to park. Um, so I would say expanded access to existing conservation areas. And then I would add strengthen our climate resiliency. Because as a coastal community, I think that we're going to have to focus on those issues more and more as time goes by. And it should be roundly adopted in this uh, vision here. Thank those you. are my comments for that. Thank you. OK. Um, I had written down or made note, um, similar to Julia, about um, not only preserving and protecting, um, but providing access um, for residents in the community to the areas that we are trying to preserve and protect. Okay, I had a couple of notes. So the first bullet point where it lists out um, like Sunset Lake, Greg Pond, Cranberry Pond, I think there's many more areas and I don't love that we just list out a few. I think protecting, restoring, and promoting natural landscapes, biodiversity, and wildlife habitat at all of our open space areas. I don't think it should be that we should call out just a, a few. So then don't call them out specifically. Just say at all of the open space areas. You could say all of the open space areas, including, but just I just don't want to ignore town forest. I mean, there's just, we have a wealth of, of great areas, so I think it, everything should be included. Okay. Is that it? Um, no, I also had a note that Braintree will undergo a process to properly designate open space because I think right now our open space zoning is, is, is not always accurate. So I think we need to go through a process um, to zone our open space as such. My other comment was um, in the bullet, helping residents to build a greater appreciation. Like I, I think we maybe reword that because I think residents do have a great appreciation. So maybe just change the wording of that. And then the community will support the implementation of successful sustainability initiatives. Um, I would love to see um, included in these bullets recycling program, which we have currently, but it's not in here. Um, flood control to make sure areas are cool and protect the climate from urban heat zones and um, generate measurable efforts to reduce noise and light pollution impact on residents and neighborhoods. I think I might be talking too fast. Yeah, I missed the, fir <laughs> I missed the first one that you said. Okay, so the, the, the first bullet? The first of the sustainable initiatives. Recycling program. Okay. I think Flood I control um, to ensure an area is cool and protect the climate from urban heat zones. And finally, generate measurable efforts to reduce noise and light pollution impact on residents and neighborhoods. OK, thank you. OK. Joe? Thank you. Uh, I would agree with the, uh, the chair's first comments concerning uh, the limited 
number of areas, um, natural spaces, conservation areas. Um, secondly, um, the second point of acquiring more conservation lands and open space, including protecting natural habitat. I think we have an opportunity there for us to all, uh, also encourage a shared uh, stewardship uh, with private landowners. Um, we seem to have a focus on just the public lands. I think we have a great opportunity uh, to partner with private landowners, some of the larger uh, landowners um, that would, uh, there's only so much land that we have right now as far as what is designated conservation. Uh, those areas uh, are, a lot of them are impacted by private land ownership. So I think that we have to incentivize that to bring that in uh, to this goal, this one particular goal. Um, the helping of residents, I'll, I'll hold off there if you are still. No, go ahead. Okay. Uh, helping residents build a greater appreciation. I think that there does have to be a more of a, um, an ownership of our residents as well uh, to be a part of that um, effort of stewardship towards uh, conserving what we have for land, uh, the natural landscape that Braintree is, what was its original appeal uh, to settlers here, and also now as we grow um, you know, in an ever-expanding world uh, for us to be able to, uh, all of us, private and public interest to help out with the end. Thank I you. believe that's pretty much it. Okay, great. Raina. Um, thank you. I, I liked a lot of what people have already said. I only had a little bit of wordsmithing in the first, um, I guess, full sentence, starting with Braintree will be a sustainable community. On the site next line, um, it says, within residential neighbor neighborhoods that help provide natural habitat and can buffer and can serve to buffer residents from incompatible nearby land uses. I, I don't know if that I can give you my copy, but I just thought it clarified it a little bit of what we meant what we meant there. To provide buffer, I missed the last part can serve to buffer residents from incompatible Got nearby it. land uses. I just, I just wordsmithed it a little bit to clarify it, and I think everybody else kind of covered other comments. From Thank you. Liz? Hi. Um, I agree with most of these comments that have been mentioned prior to me. I would like to add in the... Um, we did talk a little bit about the careful zoning of open space so that it can be counted towards our actual open space count. And in addition to that, um, we talk about um, including wooded natural areas within residential neighborhoods. I would like to see that added to the bullet point of acquiring more conservation lands and open space to include some of those residential wooded, na wooded neighborhoods. For example, the area behind um, Hawthorne Road by St. Thomas More, that would be a wonderful area to purchase and create that as open space for the town. So I, I guess to kind of combine the section up there that talks about the wooded areas within the residential neighborhoods I would like that to go into the section where we are acquiring conservation land and open space. I see. Okay, thank you. Justine. Okay, um, so I agree most of them. And like as Jen say, um, where you particularly talk about each locations. And when I look back our 1998 master plan, I know it's old, but there are there were a lot of good stuff that we still can take out of. It's where the master plan talking about different corners of the brain tree from each um, directions. What are the resources there are um, from each direction, each corner of the towns that we need to preserve and we need to expand. And um, the last one I have is also related to um, urban uh, heat islands a curve. Uh, my major issue is uh, Braintree within the center of all major highways. 
and we see Quincy have the high-rise uh, residential built right next to the highway. And what would I like to see is how um, at the limit in terms of the large scale residential facility that require high density uh, parking and traffic perspective and limit in terms of high facility that need to make a huge uh, earth moving construction. One thing I really like on the 1998 uh, master plan that part of it was restrict large scale facility and use require large scale earth moving because we are already in the middle of the traffic and after you know traffic hour from right now as a commuter I never see there's non-traffic hour in brain trees spread anymore so I hope that we can put some limitation in terms of impacting what's the impact on the urban islands. So you're fo I'm not sure I quite got exactly what you're saying, but look at the way I wrote this. Um, hold on. So what I wrote here was something about limiting large scale, um, I think you said residential facilities, yes. mm -hmm. um, limit development that would require large parking and earth moving. Yeah. Would that be just for residential or any kind of um, development that would require large earth moving? Probably every, any development because residential perspective is requiring more parking space that's, and more traffic coming to town. That's where I was focused on. Because we don't want to be like a suburb where, um, you know, slowly the <coughs> urban heat effect taking to our town when we have more So it has space. to do with the impervious surfaces right. from the parking and all of that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Are you okay with the way that I've worded this? Yeah. That's good. Okay. So I think Jennifer, or Chair Wadlin, I'm sorry, um, if we want to take public comment now on what the committee suggested and then we can have committee discussion would anyone from the public like to come up and speak on core theme one? Please do. Please state your name and do we need address? address. And address, please. Thank you. Alan Flowers, 48 Fallon Circle. Um, the, the core theme one on natural resources, I, I just don't understand why the water supply was left out of this. I mean, this is, this is the critical thing that we're going to have to deal with over the next 10 years is our inadequate water supply. I don't know if there's a solution to it other than limiting development, but that, that might be a solution is to limit uh, more intense development to conserve our water supply. Uh, it is in, it's in the core theme, um, is it five, where we talk about public the- Public facilities, Where yeah. we talk about the infrastructure, but maybe it may not be as strongly worded as what Alan is suggesting. So when we get there, maybe we should talk about that again. Okay. And Chair Wedlin, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, because I said that we were gonna do all three core themes first, and then open it up to the public. Right. So I'm sorry about that confusion, that was me forgetting what I just told everybody. <laughs> uh. <laughs> but I did write down Alan's comment. Okay. Okay. Keep any other comments, Alan? Should I come back or, or? No, if you have comments, let's, let's hear them. Well, I, I think that the renewable resources section there, I think nobody in town wants wind turbines here. Is there some way that we could say excluding wind turbines? And that I agree with the previous speaker that uh, a way to deal with urban heat islands is to limit overdevelopment. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Okay, I think what we'll do is, is we'll stick to the original plan and we'll go through core, we'll just zip around again for core theme two, and then we're gonna do it again for core theme three, and then, so for the public, if it's okay, we're gonna have you come up for one, two, and three all at once, if you have comments, changes, things that you can't live with in that statement. 
Okay, Peter, so I'm going to turn it over to you for core theme two. Peter, did you have any comments or? On core theme two, the fourth bullet, my comment would be inside the adequate parking, improved parking, expanded parking, something along those lines. And then I keep getting hung up on local business and I think uh, I wonder whether it should be local businesses of all sizes, small, large, um, and not just, I don't know if local means small or not. Dick, did you have a comment that you wanted to make? Yes, okay, all right, um, why don't we take Dick's comment? Come on up. My name is Richard Wenzel. I live at 74 Spring Street, Braintree. And I'm a former water commissioner for this uh, town of Braintree. Uh, I happened to go by the reservoir today and it is probably about a quarter of the way filled. And this is November. I also then went by the Ricciardi Reservoir. <laughs> and I was amazed at what I saw when I got up to the Ricciardi Reservoir. It looks like a construction site. You can't even see the reservoir that used to be there. I suppose it's still there, except that you can't see it anymore. About 20 years ago, we had proposed to deepen the Randolph area of reservoir and deepen it so that we would have an adequate water supply. At this point in time, 20 years later, we still haven't deepened that reservoir. We still are going to have significant, and I mean significant, issues with water. And I don't see anything in the master plan that addresses it. And that's about all I have to okay, say. Okay, that's a very good point. And I think Alan had the same point that maybe we should focus more on water. And the, the, I believe it, it's mentioned in the, last, in the last section. So I think that we can kind of revisit the strength of the language and, and maybe put more more meat into that and not just brush it over. So thank you very much. Okay, and I'm gonna turn it over to Dave Cunningham. To address core theme two, thank you very much. Yeah, sorry. Um, I received the email that contained the comments that the uh, Braintree Chamber of Commerce offered for this particular core theme. Mm -hmm. And I, I think they gave some thought to it before they sent it in. And I tend to agree with uh, the basic language that they give as a suggestion. But I also um, agree with some changes that another member is going to be um, suggesting. Um, I guess the, the thought behind it is we clearly do want to promote economic growth in this town um, across the board uh, in the areas that are used for uh, economic activity. Um, 
But at the same time, I think we also need to uh, live with the, the truth that people are operating businesses out of their houses, and the town of Braintree says that's illegal, um, yet they're doing it anyway. Um, so at some point, I think we have to address that. People are working from their houses, people are running businesses from their houses, and it's not impacting most people when they do that. Um, but nevertheless, with all of the expenses that the town of Braintree has, um, that it's often unable to meet, I certainly want to have a master plan that promotes economic growth um, so that we can take advantage of uh, something that we've had as an advantage for years, and that is we have a very good tax base um, that in many respects is the envy of many other cities and towns, and we also split our tax rate so that businesses pay at a higher rate than residents, and I certainly don't want to discourage businesses who are interested <coughs> in coming to the town um, by having language in a master plan that has them decide to go to another town instead. Good David, point. is there anything specific that you wanted to see <coughs> added or removed from the statement? I think I got what you said, but I'm just not sure what the revision is. Um, well, I see that we have a um, recommendation that started earlier where, we, where a person is liking to start off with a verb. Um, so pursue, um, balance growth in ways, um, is going to be proposed by somebody else, so I won't dwell on that. But I also think that maybe we could use the term economic growth um, to be clear on that subject. Thank you. Yep. Okay, Shelley. All right. So I think um, the second bullet point, when it says through strategic commercial growth, um, I like the idea, but it's nothing specific. We've had a lot of commercial properties sitting in the town that either um, is in disarray or not able to be rented or um, isn't attractive for whatever reason. So I guess my question is, when we're talking about through strategic commercial growth, who is responsible for, you know, helping bring this commercial growth? Who's, you know, what, is there a team? Are we creating a team that's going to go out there and try to promote Braintree and partner with commercial properties so that we get the right businesses uh, matched with the right um, landowners or property owners so that we get the kind of growth we're looking for? But to me, that's very vague um, because it's not really assigning anything to anybody to change it because the town doesn't own that commercial property. For the most part, it's all private and it's built, held on to for a while and some of it's empty and some of it's filled. So I'd like to see something in here that says how we're going to do that. Okay. So I get what you're saying, and I think we could probably be a little bit more specific. Yeah, um, like maybe creating. The strategy piece will basically, t we'll try to figure out how to do things through the strategies, okay. which will be in phase three. So we'll look at zoning. We'll look at how are those properties zoned. Yeah. What kind of capacity does the town have? Is there an economic development um, you know, uh, focus and team or you know, committee that has some resources that can broker. Yep. So the how, we're not quite there yet. Yeah. Um, but I think that we can say something uh, to get at what you're saying without writing a strategy for it. We could say something like the town actively seeks, you know, through regulatory policy or capacity to promote strategic growth of private property, something like that. So I get what you're saying. I just don't want to give you an expectation that we're going to yeah, write the okay. strategy yeah. yet. Is that fair? Yeah, that's totally fair, okay. yeah. And then the fourth point, when it talks about Braintree Square, South Braintree Square and the land, it will be tree-lined, walkable. Um, I, I like the idea of um, clearing of the snow and the ice to promote the health of local businesses. Um, there's always been that kind of lull between South Braintree Square and Braintree Square. 
So I don't know if we have to add it in there, but we need some sort of connection. So it's almost like it'd be nice to have the squares all shoveled out and the public parking all plowed out. But if there's no connection in between, say, Fair Academy and like the 420 Washington Street area, you know, you're not going to connect it. It won't be walkable for the people from Braintree Square to get to the train. And the same thing from people from South Braintree Square, or the Highlands Braintree Lumber area to get over to the train either. So we, we need to kind of include that too. Thank you. You're welcome. Aaron. Thank you. Um, I just have a point of, I guess, clarification on the term commercial squares. I think that I'm just curious more like what do we, like Braintree Square, South Braintree Square, are those, are those technically commercial squares? Are they business districts? Like how, I think we should be consistent in how we talk about them. They're not really zoned commercial. Like that's a different type of zoning that we have. So I don't know if it's better to reflect to come up with a term that fits that. Um, I don't know if anybody has any suggestions or thoughts on that, but that is one comment. Um, another comment I have is with regards to uh, the second bullet point. Um, while I think our former master plan also touched on this idea of commercial tax base versus residential tax base and trying to use a lot of the commercial tax benefit that we have to keep our residential tax rates low. I think a lot of the things we're identifying in this master plan, which are great and we want, all cost money. And I think while we want to be mindful of the low residential taxes, like I just don't know if we should keep it as a goal, maybe instead of saying low, ba maybe base our base changes we make on how it affects residential tax rate. Say what? I'm sorry. Like if we make changes, like keep in mind that it things we do, whether we choose to, to do something or not, and it impacts residential tax rate to be mindful of it. I just don't know if we can do all this stuff and be effective in all these other ways. Like if we don't have money to do all these things, like I don't, I just, it seems a little misplaced in here and just, I don't know if we wanna like tie our hands with that. Um, but I think we should be mindful of it cause that's always been a benefit of what Braintree has had um, and what we've sacrificed to have it, you know, have so much commercial all around our residential areas. So um, my third point is with the next bullet the biotech life sciences corridor, is that an actual area identified in Braintree or is that, um, because if it is a general area, I think we should identify it. A corridor to me does represent an area if we're speaking more broadly about that um, sector or um, something different than corridor. And the fourth comment I have is just, I think it's in the second to last bullet point where it says local retail in new buildings, I would say comma renovated buildings as well as preserve historic buildings, just add renovated buildings in there too, or redeveloped. And then I think it would be beneficial because I do agree with what um, some of the speakers are talking about with regards to overall sustainability and water sustainability. I think we don't really know what that future of that is. I think like the West, like out West is for sure dealing with super big water restriction issues. And we don't, you know, I think we don't know what that means um, in the Northeast, if it ever will be a problem or if it's a problem for Braintree, but it might be helpful to cross-reference growth with maybe some of the other core themes, whether it's sustainability and core theme one or just maybe without saying it, it already means you cross-reference, but it might be worth calling out that growth should be also weighed against sustainability goals and infrastructure constraints. And that's it. Thank you. Okay, Julia. Thank you. Um, so the first thing I would like to suggest is in the spirit of using strong verbs for each item, I would start with pursue balanced growth. And I would use the term balanced growth rather than careful growth for a reason, which is that 
our growth has to match what we need in the town and also what the finances are, that are necessary to meet those needs. Our budget has to be balanced. So we have to grow in ways that meet the needs of our budget. And there's a lot of ways that we can do that. You can grow more so you can afford more things. You can grow less and afford, you know, and, and make ends meet. Or you can decide to cut things that, you, that the community decides it doesn't want anymore. You have to do, but you do have to have balance. So, for example, um, if South Shore Plaza was declining, then we would have to um, make a decision about how we would handle, you know, making up that tax revenue that they produce. So we could do it either with a tax increase or a reduction in services or growth in some other place or way, but we do always have to have balance. So I would, uh, I would say we should pursue balanced growth. And then the next point that I would add is that in the bullets, you know, for, this, for similar reasons, we need to discuss the second bullet because our tax rate in my opinion, should not be governed by our master plan. Our tax rate has to be governed by the economic conditions in which we live and also um, the needs of the town. So we've had a very low tax rate for a long time, and that has huge advantages. But we also live in a town that just voted at a very high rate in favor of a debt exclusion to pay for a new school. We live in a town that was infuriated when three of our roofs blew off a few years ago because we hadn't invested properly in our municipal uh, buildings. We, as a counselor, I can tell you that an enormous portion of residents in town are concerned about the state of their sidewalks, which are vastly more expensive to contend with than people uh, imagine. So, we want to take care of our town. We also want to pay the people who provide us services. We want to pay our teachers. We want to pay our DPW workers. We want to pay our police officers and our firefighters and everybody else who works for the town. And those costs go up every year. In Massachusetts, we cannot raise taxes more than 2.5% in any given year no matter what, so unless we pass an override or a debt exclusion which is a voter initiative that we just went through. But I, I think this second bullet says, through strategic commercial growth, uh, and I'm not opposed to strategic commercial growth, but I would say strategic growth because I think sometimes commercial growth is the right thing. Sometimes in certain places in town, commercial growth is the right move. But in other places in town, commercial growth is not desirable, and nobody wants it. And in some places in town, residential growth is acceptable. And in other places in town, residential growth is not acceptable. So I would say through strategic growth, Braintree will meet its, it will meet the, will, will meet its residents' needs with the lowest tax rate that we can afford to offer. Or I would just strike it all together, one or the other. But other than that, what I would say is in the heading, um, which I'm returning to now because I have kind of a different line of thinking to discuss on that, um, I would have it say, pursue balanced growth in ways that promote local businesses, strategically repurpose existing developed sites, because one of the things that was made clear to us in the existing conditions report is that there isn't a lot of developable space in Braintree, so I would just make it clear that we need to strategically repurpose existing developed sites because there are a lot of um, sites that have languished in Braintree for one reason or another, and I would like to see those capitalized upon and improved. And um, I would add right there that we should protect existing neighborhoods because I know that there are neighborhoods that are regularly concerned about being confronted with more and more commercial infringement either because of noise 
or ad additional traffic that's coming through the neighborhoods. And so I think that that wish for residents should be included in this section. I think that's appropriate there. And uh, I would say revitalize commercial districts because I wouldn't limit in this particular section a revitalization to only squares. I think, for example, Braintree Marketplace, where the Kmart used to be, is ripe for redevelopment, for example, and that's not in the square. So uh, I, would, I would just broaden that terminology. And those are my comments. Other than that, I think it's excellent. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I didn't have too much that hasn't already been um, discussed. Um, but two of the ones I want to touch on were what Julie had just said about protecting um, the neighborhoods, adding something about that, and then what Peter had said about the um, using other verbiage, perhaps on the adequate parking um, in, in those squares or areas that we decide on. Okay, I, um, on the first bullet, would like to add that redevelopment should be consistent with the suburban character of Braintree and align with the character of the area and should not impact the quality of life of residents in the town, especially the nearby res residents. This includes traffic, congestion, and visibility. Visual screening and buffers to provide neighborhood mitigation and protection, and buffers cannot, I'm so sorry. Buffers cannot include parking lots. <laughs> I didn't get it verbatim, but I hope I got the All gist right, of it. All right, the gist All of right. it. Okay. Um, and I think I would strike out the through commercial growth, Braintree will maintain and to continue. I mean, obviously, that's what we want, but, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. I agree that depends on the area of town where the commercial growth could occur. And um, and I don't want to leave it at just growth, but, um, and then the following bullet, um, and this may be getting ahead of ourselves, but I really think it has to have a commitment that Braintree must invest in a full-time position to recruit the kinds of companies like biotech, life science, and health science companies in order to expand the tax base and provide a revenue stream to reinvest in the infrastructure. So I feel like it's so important because we can talk about anything we want, but we can't get it unless we in, in invest in somebody that w can really go and speak the corporate language and not maybe you know, someone that works for Town Hall, but maybe somebody who is a corporate executive that can speak speak to why companies might come here and help negotiate. So I'd really like to see that happen. Um, and I think it's important because I don't think we can have any of it without it. Is that me? No. no um, we, are, we are running <laughs> short on time right now. Okay. Um, and then I just, when when we talked about the snow clearing, but I think beyond snow clearing, like the upkeep and beautification needs to happen in the squares. They're like a lot of times overflowing trash barrels and um, and I think we need to, Braintree needs to develop strategies to promote local business in the square, like, you know, close it off on a Sunday and have it be an open day where people come or make it a one way so people can actually park um, and come and enjoy a day in the squares. Um, and then I would say also encourage a broad range of business types and encourage diversified ownership. Um, and I don't understand really the last, the last bullet, um, improve commercial corridors connecting Weymouth and Quincy. I'm, I'm not sure, like, it's the, la it's the very last bullet before. Oh, yeah, I just, I don't know about that one, but um, I thought strike it, but you know, I don't know how other people feel about it, improving commercial corridors between, I feel like we have so much work to do, commercial corridors between Weymouth and Braintree and Quincy and Bra I, I don't know, but that's just my opinion. Okay, you can go. Oh, <laughs> Your <thank> turn. You. <laughs> thank you. Um, I do agree with uh, some of the previous speakers uh, that we want to protect our established neighborhoods absolutely is, is, I think, a priority. 
Um, we also want to protect the uh, residential taxpayers from having to pay uh, or be overburdened to pay for um, what we need in order to run a community. Um, we've heard all kinds of different um, situations and conditions that Braintree has faced uh, in the past few years, uh, presently, uh, that require funds. So, with that said, um, my first comment would be to bullet number one, uh, we need to encourage a shared, and, and this isn't the actual verbiage, but my idea is to encourage a shared partnership slash um, uh, for, excuse me, shared partnership uh, in partnering, pardon me, I'm reading the wrong line here in my own notes, strike a balance in the needed economic growth opportunities, essentially how that wants to be worded. Um, we do need a commercial balance in this town. It's, it's helped us quite a bit. Uh, David Cunningham talked about more considerations towards promoting a commercial growth, and that is a careful commercial growth in the opportunity areas that we have that can handle commercial business around transit-oriented, uh, around transportation assets that address our, uh, our traffic concerns. Um, we also don't want to overburden a commercial tax revenue that, that would only serve to drive away the businesses we're trying to promote. And with some of these ideas that we've heard, I love the idea of trying to bring in uh, life science, biomed, those types of things. And I believe the corridor reference you made, is that to the life science corridor, which, we, which is the Red Lines moniker? I believe so. Not yeah. a corridor specifically in the town of Braintree. I believe because, so, right, yeah. We have m numerous opportunities to uh, introduce those types of uses uh, in our community that won't uh, interfere with existing neighborhoods. Um, and if we, you know, we do it, there was a mention about we do a tax split in this community. And our residential tax rate has been the benefactor of that for, for as long as I can remember. However, to my earlier point, there has to be a balance that gets struck at some point. We have a lot of needs. We've heard about roofs being blown off. We've heard about traffic through our streets. We have heard uh, during the most recent budget season that the town does not have money to field a traffic enforcement division, which is badly needed in our community. We don't have enough money to put down sidewalks, which is a public safety issue. So I mean, I could go on about the, talk, the, the need for revenues we have, it's just, how do we strike that balance to achieve those revenues and achieve and maintain our quality of life? So um, the uh, commercial hubs, um, we recognize that in the bullet number four that uh, I think our, our squares shouldn't be limited to just commercial and retail. I think you see in a lot of healthy towns, healthy squares, you have foot traffic. And that means you have a mix of residential. And now that goes toward, it's not a one size fits all from a density rule, but I, I did like the fact that we, we see a comprehensive community supported plans. That to me is a tool and an approach for us to be able to explore those follow on solutions after these stated visions or goals. Um, and that comes down to zoning. Um, let's make sure that I've got all of my points here. Um, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Raina? Did you, did you get everything? Yes, I think so. So I just want to make, I'm only going to make uh, one point for me, and I also just wanted to mention that, you know, the, the suggestion that um, Jen made about having an economic development officer. I want to make sure that gets translated into the action plan because I think that's, you know, whether it's here, it's the, definitely should be there. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> so I had wanted to kind of add a bullet which has been touched on a little bit to address underutilized and abandoned buildings and lots in a manner that enhances and stabilizes abutting uses, whether they're residential, open space, or commercial, because 
you know what they're not quite blight but i think that that would go a long way to addressing some of these other things they could be buffer they could be economic they could be whatever but are you saying to add that i'm sorry i'm just trying to follow yeah i thought that should be an added bullet actually because i didn't see where i mean you could add it to something but underutilized and abandoned uh properties in a way that enhance and stabilize you know their neighbors their abutters i think i think i'll just leave it at that the other stuff i had just sort of touched on what others have already said <clears throat> thank you liz okay I, I agree with um most of the comments here tonight i i do just have a couple little um tweaking in the one two three fourth bullet where Erin mentioned attractive commercial hubs what about maybe subtracting I mean um, removing that and adding in attractive economic hubs would that make sense or economic slash commercial um, and then up to the very first statement where Julia wanted to remove the word careful and add the word balance. Careful was the word that was used in the, um, in the residence survey and that was, that was a very big item, careful growth policies. And I think we could incorporate the two of them together, maybe careful and balanced or, but I think careful is, is important and I think careful implies balancing. So I, I don't want to remove the word careful there. I do like that. And other than that, those are my opinions. Thank you. Justine? Um, as I'm doing research on what other people do, the word on the street is smart growth. We don't always have to think about how we can budget balance our budget versus, um, you know, um, transit grow or suburban or what is. Can we challenge ourselves to using the word smart growth to think out of the box? With example, with the historical resource that we have, can we include um, resource for tourism? Can we use the park resource that we have to have summer concert? in terms of just looking at, we have to get the fund from the state to comply with the building regulations. So I'm going to challenge ourselves, we say, can we use smart growth? Are you saying instead of careful growth or balanced growth? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. 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 And so, oh, I'm sorry, was there another comment? Um, yeah, the second comment when I'm talking about promoting small business is I, hope that there are resources in town that can help or assist, assist with the small business where, example, if they want to start business in town, where who are the resources, is there such um, assistance there for them? And um, it's a way that we can limit, limit the different category of the small business example in town now, we probably have 50% nail salon and hair salon. If we don't limit based on percentage of, of each category, we have no space for restaurants to come in because the, all commercial building has leased for hair salon or nail salon or beauty spa. So I'm looking at a way where we can limit um, different category of small business and resource to assist small business to grow in our town. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now we can do the third core theme. Yes. Justine, do you want to start the third core theme so you're not last? <laughs> I like to be last. <laughs> you want to be last? All right, we'll, we'll, we'll go over to Peter. <laughs> I didn't want you to feel left and, out. And Chair Wadlin, I'm just, I suggest we blow through that break, which we've basically done just to try to make up some time. Okay. Okay. I would suggest that we add um, improve safety in the first sentence. Peter, I think, weren't they going with Justine first? I'm sorry. Did I misunderstand that? 
Oh, well, Justine said she wanted to go Oh, back. I apologize. Yeah. I was worried about the break, and I missed that. Okay, right? go ahead. You said, yeah. Okay. I would suggest that we include the word improve safety in the first sentence. Uh, the existing conditions report revealed that we have a couple streets that are like top five, top ten in crashes in the region, a lot of which include pedestrians and cars, and I think that that's something that needs to be worked on. Thank you. David. Thanks. Um, I also think we should incorporate uh, language that would suggest that we improve safety within the uh, first sentence. Um, and at the same time, uh, I don't think we uh, should be limiting ourselves to um, the, the infrastructure that exists now. Um, I think we need to add infrastructure. We're a bisected town. I think we need more um, ability to get from one side of the town to the other, whether that's a bridge, another bridge over Route 3, or whatever. Um, but that's something that I think needs to be uh, incorporated into this theme anyway. Um, and there's some suggested language that we should uh, try to produce better connectivity between the two sides of the highway. I absolutely agree with that. Um, trying to get from one side of the town to another side of the town. Uh, you're basically limited to three choices. One of those choices is the rotary, uh, which is one of the most dangerous places on the South Shore to drive. And it's even more dangerous to walk or ride a bike at. Um, so, uh, I really support the change of um, adding, produce better connectivity between the two sides of the highway. Um, I also think that we might want to be even more specific with respect to um, not only the Braintree Rotary, but also the Braintree Split. Um, for some reason, we haven't focused on what is the biggest traffic problem, not only in Braintree, but in the entire region south of Boston. Uh, I know we as a town can't control what's going to take place there, but we should not leave it out of our master plan um, because nobody else is going to put it in their master plan. It's located in Braintree. <laughs> and if we address all kinds of infrastructure problems and ignore that, then we can just be uh, destined to have to live with it for however long it takes before the state or the federal government gets around to doing something about it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shelley. I don't have a lot to add to this other than the rotary is not mentioned in, in the discovery stage. Um, you know that is probably the number one place in Braintree that has the most accidents. And I know that there was recent work done on that, so I'd like to see if maybe there's a study afterwards after they put the lines in, but I do live down the street from the Rotary and there's accidents all the time, so I think that we do have to do something about it. Um, and also the ability to cross over the Rotary safely, which would not be using your bike and riding around it. I, I agree with like a bridge or some sort of walking path or something like that to connect the town. Erin. Thank you. Um, I just have a couple minor comments. I think with the first bullet item where it says Braintree residents will have safe and well-maintained roads with, I would suggest after with to say um, strategically strategically managed traffic management initiatives. I don't think signalization in and of itself will reduce congestion, and I don't even know if it's congestion as much as keeping traffic moving through town in a safe way or keeping um, travel, travel moving through town in a safe way. Um, so that's one comment on not calling out just signalization. 
And then I just have a general comment throughout. There are times when the word town is capitalized and times when the word town is not capitalized. So if we could just um, be consistent with when referring to the town to capitalize that T. Thank you. Julia. Uh, so in, to begin with, I would, I would start with upgrade rather than upgraded, but that's minor. And then I think some language to kind of unite the two halves of Braintree in terms of our transportation network could be to produce better connectivity between the two sides of the highway. Uh, and I think I've been considering the very last bullet point. I really love that idea about a local trolley and an on-demand bus service. But I wonder if it's a little specific. Usually we talk about let's improve safety, let's improve connectivity, for example. And that's, it's, I want it to be folded into this master plan because I think it's great as an idea. I just don't know if it is maybe too specific for this particular location. That's all. Okay. Um, I, I haven't, I don't have any comments that haven't already been. Okay, real quick, the first bullet, I would say we talk about neighborhood cut through traffic, but we have traffic everywhere. You can't get from one end. I listened to a man at a meeting say he couldn't get from one end of the town to the next without stopping at McDonald's. So I think that um, we need to address traffic through, through the entire town, and that could be through some um, like police presence to, you know, to, to stop um, some of the cut through, because I believe that a lot, some of that is cut through traffic. So um, if they're speeding through the town, perhaps we could stop that and add some speed bumps to neighborhoods so we stop the neighborhood cut through traffic. I also agree with the brain tree split. I just don't know that what we can do about it. And the only other comment I have is um, bicycle, bicycle and pedestrian infrastructure. I would say it needs to include updated sidewalks and crossings um, that are ADA compliant. set mm -hmm. thank you your turn okay uh, bullet number one I think that we need to incorporate uh, as part of the mitigation measures or the effects of uh, realizing a safer street uh, and to cut down on congestion is to incorporate road design as a means uh, as one of the solutions uh, there are a number of communities in the area and around the country that do incorporate uh, traffic calming measures through road design um, we do have a, uh, this town f uh, fortunately has an annual roads program. I believe that's something that should be uh, part of the considerations when, new ro when existing roads are being repaired, uh, as well as um, just if it's beyond a repair, something that has to address a very serious issue that we're facing. Um, I think collaboration with communities around us, and I think this goes more to the point that Mr. Cunningham had made, uh, about, you know, Braintree is working on its own master plan. He hasn't heard of any other master plans by the state, uh, if you will, or from a regional standpoint. Um, fortunately, I have been involved in a, a regional, a few regional uh, initiatives as a member of the council and just as a resident of the town. Uh, also, uh, Council of Flaherty has also been a part of those conversations where there is a South Shore uh, traf uh, traffic and transportation regional traffic and transportation association that is trying to collaborate amongst communities using best practices in communities that from uh, Plymouth up through Braintree and they have programs right now that have ideas that uh, have uh, trolleys within the community on-demand bus requests things of that nature but I think a really great opportunity for us uh, that we need to look at is a public-private partnership I know that the planning department has for a number of years as a, a fund that certain developers, when they meet a certain standard, would have to uh, um, contribute to those funds. However, those funds aren't enough, really, to affect any kind of meaningful change. So I think as part of uh, follow-on steps like a comprehensive zoning rewrite, uh, where we need to enhance and upgrade those uh, archaic rules that we have that are over 40, 50 years old, uh, they can help, and those, those can be tools that can help us with uh, this traffic. 
So incorporate road design as a means for a uh, solution or um, is bullet point number one. Bullet point one and three would also partner with the regional communities uh, and the state to incorporate um, traffic and congestion solutions. We also have the state has a, uh, the state transportation has regional transportation forums that they hold every quarter and each state and each town has a representative for them to be able to lobby and ask for funds that would help promote uh, some of the traffic problems, which is the biggest one that is pointed out already is the split at Braintree, which causes a number of problems for the town of Braintree. Thank you. Raina? Um, I'm good. Liz? Um, I, basically, I agree with everything everyone has said, except I do want to just enhance the Braintree split issue. That's been a problem that, you know, over the years with all of the conversations with the South Shore Plaza, we have discussed that, and um, that is one of the most dangerous intersections in the entire country, which was one of the reasons why we had a real big problem with the, um, with the billboards going up there because it's a huge distraction in that area. But if we could get some kind of resolution on that or, or redesign on that, that would help to eliminate some of the cut through traffic for people driving to other towns because people get off there and drive through Braintree to get to other towns. So it's not just neighborhood cut through, but it's entire town cut through. And I think that that is something that is kind of at the core of this whole thing that we need to get to. Thank you. Justine. I know this one will probably make people upset. One thing that I want to add is um, prioritize public safety, road safety based on the near public, not individual. I see, so example, I live in Flaherty. Uh, we don't get a road bumps. We don't get a road slow down traffic bumps, but neighborhood around it got them because, um, so what I'm trying to add on to is balance of safety in towns such as priority, prioritize commercial and school instead of local needs. I know we all want road bumps in our streets, but from the, if you're looking at overall town perspective, um, you know, our, cent, our commercial, our center of town, our school is where it should be priority. Okay. For traffic comments? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so those are all three. If you wanted to open for the public comment. Yes, so, so now is the time for public comment on the one through three. If anyone has any comments, please come on up and just state your name and your address. Well, I think after this. Oh, right. Please just about? mention what core theme you're going to refer to. Um, I'm Elizabeth Maglio. I live on Glen Rose Ave. Um, I am also the counselor for District 3, which is East Braintree. And so I am so appreciative of everything that all of the work that you all have put into this all this time. It's an amazing document. And I agree with probably everything everyone has said, even those things that contradict each other sometimes. They all sound very reasonable and committed, and I appreciate it. There's one um, part of this, of core. Core theme two, um, that is the last bullet, <clears throat> that I'm actually going to um, comment on um, the chair, Jennifer's um, comments, because for East Braintree, those commercial corridors connecting Weymouth and Quincy, that is basically a, a, a huge part of, of my district. And so we have um, Quincy Ave is that main drive leading into Weymouth Landing, um, which is a major commercial corridor, which we know that some things are going to be happening there that are very exciting. But the vision of having walkable, safe, good sidewalks, um, good traffic flow would be to actually focus on that commercial connection. And then the same thing at the other end with um, where Quincy Ave connects and East Howard, Howard connects to um, Quincy. Um, that too is a 
where the ship party is, where there's some conference and I think some restaurants, and there's a lot of things that are kind of happening in that area as well, which I would love to see a nice transition and hopefully see some more vibrancy on Quincy Ave for the businesses that have been able to stick out what has been a very difficult time. So I would ask that we leave this in and um, keep that as part of our vision. Sure, it's not up to me anyway, but, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, now I understand it better. Yeah. I actually didn't understand it, so I appreciate you coming. Thank you. Explain it. <laughs> Please state your name and address. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jean Giagrandi, and I'm from Wilkins Road in East Braintree. Um, I want to thank everybody on this committee for all the work that you're doing. It's a lot of work, and it's greatly appreciated. I am responding to Core 3, and um, I just want to let you know um, my area in Wilkins Road was granted in, 19, in year 19 the calming program, traffic calming program, which we are actively working on now with the help of the engineering department, and I thank them. Um, so because Wilkins Road is a cut through, it is also um, a walking area to the school. It's the next street over from um, Ross School. And um, we've been diligently working with um, signage signals and trying to um, eliminate the, it as a cut through. Um, and one area that, um, and I agree with Erin, one area, you know, signage and signals and stuff doesn't do all of it. So my proposal, as having experience with this as a cut through, is to incorporate that the town will negotiate with business trucking, especially the trucking cutting through um, side streets that have no sidewalks, that is a walking to the school area, and alternate using alternate routes um, instead of um, using those side streets. Um, we have actively been negotiating this at presently and it works um, but the town has to be a supportive of this and I think if it's in the master plan going forward that it could be um, very helpful for um, the streets that are cut throughs that are walking areas to the school so I thank you very much for considering thank it. you Jen, do you under, do you do you got, got it. it all yeah. right good good excellent I missed a little bit of it, so I'm glad you got it. And please state your name and your address. Kelly Moore, 46 Hollis Ave, Braintree. Uh, core theme two. Uh, first of all, just a few editorial comments. Uh, there have been, well, first of all, thank you for your service. Really appreciate it. I know it's a lot of work for each one of you. And I, for one, appreciate it. The um, comment comments that the residential in tax rate should increase to accommodate commercial growth or growth in Braintree. I think we need to be very careful with that because we have we enjoy a low rate. For, you know, for as long as I've been here. So we have to be careful because we want to continue to attract uh, people who want to buy homes in Braintree. And we don't want to make that more expensive for them to do. Bullet point one uh, in core theme two, the question I've got in the first sentence is repurposing. And really, what does that mean? Repurposing key areas of interest based on comprehensive community supported plans. So I'm not sure what the term repurposing actually means, but it's rather ambiguous. Repurposing it to what? The Let's 
think that covers my concerns about core two, core three. Um, oh, back to core two, last bullet point. Improve commercial corridors. I agree with the previous speaker that Quincy Ave is a concern and that we really need to enhance the corridors, remove the left turn signal down by uh, Weymouth Landing. Just make that a straight through, because cars do that anyway. That's the point. Uh, but commercial corridors, I'd say improve corridors, because it's commercial and residential. Um, just improve the corridors connecting to Weymouth and Quincy. Um, core theme three. I like the idea of regular uh, traffic calming program updates. Like Mr. Reynolds said that, I think that's a good idea. Um, and road, road redesign, whatever that means. Brain tree split, split the Red Sea, same thing. Um, and last point. In core three, local trolley, I think, is a great idea. I agree with um, Councillor Flaherty's thought that it's very specific, but it's a good ask, and I think we should keep it in there. Other than that, that's all I've got. Thank you. Thank you. Would any, oh, here we go. Please state your name and your address. Hi, I'm Bill Crockin. I live on Manatequid Ave, right up the street. Um, core theme three is, is near and dear to my heart. I, I do a lot of walking of my dogs. A lot of you have probably seen me with my two huskies. Um, the other day, two days ago, and I, I was talking to Joe Reynolds about this earlier, I was crossing Washington Street um, at Hollis School, the one that flashes. Um, I was halfway across the, the um, crosswalk and I was hit by a car. The only reason I'm walking today is the grace of God. Um, it, it was because of the volume and, and um, people just not paying attention. They're, they're cutting through on Washington Street. Anyone that lives off of Washington Street knows what I'm talking about because you, you'll see it every day. The, the massive volume of traffic on Washington Street is, is just incredible. I, I'm a lifelong resident of Braintree, and I've seen it get worse and worse. Um, also, at, at um, on West Street, up at the water tower, anyone who, who crosses there is taking their life in their hands. Um, I've had cars screech to a stop many, many times, um, and between Black Friday and New Year's Eve, if you live anywhere in the Flaherty area, you're in a snow globe. You can't leave your street. You can't get out because of the traffic is, is horrendous. Now that's because of the plaza mostly, but also people cutting through. Um, these people are not residents of our neighborhood. They're not even close to residents of our neighborhood. They're cutting through to get to Randolph. They're cutting through to get to Holbrook. They're cutting through to go anywhere but Braintree. Um, I don't know what can be done about this, but it, it's, it's truly a horror show. And um, I don't know if police presence would do it. Um, you know, people's, people's speed from stop sign to stop sign. They will, they will stop at a stop sign and, and go 50 miles an hour to the next stop sign. It's, it's ludicrous. We need to limit the traffic in Braintree somehow, some way. It's, it's unsafe. Um, I guess that's all I have to say. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Please state your name and address. Uh, good evening. Steve Shasha, Hollis Ave. I, I had a quick question before I make my comments. And, um, because taxes and revenue have come up tonight, having attended most of these meetings, I just wanted to clarify that the goal of this master plan is, at this point, not to think about that. Is that right? And, and I only ask because 
you know, I think Dave is spot on with thinking about different ways to manage traffic and a bridge across Route 3 would be fantastic. It would help Braintree Square a lot. The cost of something like that is prohibitive, right? And that's why we've never done it. So, and, you know, honestly, when I look at these priorities, curbside composting, and they all sound great. But if we're talking about what we can afford, I'd say get rid of all this and build a new high school, right? So, so we're not thinking about that right now, right? This is just a wish list. This is this, a wish list now. Okay. When we get into the strategies and work with department managers and others on trying to figure out what's realistic, then we go back to this and basically change the vision to, to reflect the strategies that we end up with. Got it. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify that. So then my only comments are on the, um, on the commercial growth. I, I do think it should remain the way it is, strategic, careful growth. Um, you know, we have a whole section on housing, and if we want to talk about housing growth and what it does for the town, that would be the place for that. Um, the only other comment I have is about the water. You know, I, I do think that Alan and Dick had a good point about the, the um, water supply in core theme one, because I know it's addressed in infrastructure, but the water infrastructure could be viewed differently than the conservation of water and the preservation of our aquifers. And, you know, I, I think there's some room in the sustainability section to talk about the water supply. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else? Please. Um, Alan Flowers from 48 Fallon Circle. And I just wanted to go down to the, uh, the uh, core theme two, because uh, I didn't have a chance to comment on that one. Yeah. And I, I, I realize that uh, I'm not going to change anybody's mind here, but uh, this is just the opposite of the way it should be. Um, the town is overdeveloped right now, and we, by the master plan, we can't be encouraging growth. We should be limiting growth. That should be a core principle of this master plan, and I'm not getting it from anybody, so it's very discouraging. Can I ask a point of clarity? When you say limiting growth, do you mean on the commercial side? Do you mean on the housing side? Or do you mean both? Because well, that, we were talking a, about only commercial. Uh, every, every which way. OK. I mean, uh, that nobody says that, that we don't have enough commercial. That's obvious. But we're, we're overbuilt for housing, too. So um, the, the, the principle should be that they limit development, not encourage it, and the principle should be no zoning changes to have more intense development for any reason, housing, commercial, or, or anything. Um, I realize that's not a popular opinion here, but that's, that's my view. It might Thank be. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Please state your name and address. My name is Sarah DeMeo. I live on Academy Street, short, right back there. Um, I'm sorry I came in late when you were all talking about this. It's uh, Braintree High Parent Teacher Conference Night. And as you know, it's tough to get to these meetings, but um, I've been following this closely or as best I can. And I did want to offer a couple of things tonight. Um, so uh, I'm also a small business owner. And so I'm interested in uh, business issues here. And of course, my wonderful neighborhood and, and place I'm sending three kids. I have a child in high school and middle school and the elementary school. So I'm going to be paying attention for a long time. Um, and I've been following things for a few years now because I was concerned about the rezone. I didn't understand it. It was too much too fast. And since then, I'm now still concerned about too much too fast, but I'm also very, very concerned about revenue. Very concerned about revenue. Um, so to core theme two, as we look at that, it, it's a wish list, and I think it's great. And I agree with everything here. Um, but I think we have to be 
realistic when we're telling the community what our vision is, we have to temper that with a little bit of realism too. So tree-lined, walkable, attractive commercial hubs, that's great, but we have to pay for the trees, right? Um, small locally owned shops and restaurants, artists and entrepreneurs, we don't set the, the lease rate, the commercial property rate. So what's involved in getting small mom and pops into town, in the, uh, uh, independent restaurants? It's complicated, it's messy, there's a lot involved there. So I like seeing these things here, but then when at the same time we're saying, okay, we're gonna maintain low residential taxes at the same time, I'm not calling for a tax increase. I moved to Braintree for the great schools and the low taxes, everybody did. Um, but we do have to talk about that too, okay? Because sometimes you do get what you pay for. And to me, I'm very interested in conversations about, you know, we don't have to jack our taxes way up and we don't have to open up the town and knock everything down, but we do have to meet in the middle because there's a lot of things that are underfunded right now, you know, even with the traffic. So. Everyone's concerned about traffic. I'm concerned about traffic. We all have, you know, cut through streets and GPS. If we want to um, have more traffic, traffic, traffic patrols, we have to pay for that, right? How are we gonna pay for it? So just looking at number two, and then the professional scientific technical industries proximity to Boston. Um, yes, that's great, I agree with all of that, but I was wondering if it was just a little too specific. Biotech life sciences, huge industry. Of course, I read the Boston Business Journal cover to cover every week. We're competing with Somerville, we're competing with RTP in North Carolina, we're competing with lots of other communities on the South Shore, but outside Massachusetts for life sciences. I hope it all happens, it's starting to happen, we're making progress, that's great. But we have to look at other solutions too. So I just think the approach here is, um, Again, there's so much great stuff in here. I forgot to thank you all. You're all working really, really hard on your own time, and I really appreciate it. Um, but I think we just need to, yes, we all want tree-lined streets, but we, all, we also have to tell residents that we have to figure out a way to pay for that. And so when I see on one page, you know, low residential taxes and controlled growth, Yes, we should control our growth, but we can't suppress growth, okay? And that's a difficult conversation to have, but we can't suppress growth and have the lowest taxes around and fix our crumbling schools, right? We can't, we can't have it all. So uh, that's my opinion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please state your name and your address. Good evening. Al Barisi, my address is 117 Pond Street. Uh, as a former member of town meeting, school committee, charter commission, I've heard these issues for years. And, and I want to thank Mr. Flowers, a previous speaker, because I think he brings up a very valid point. When we talk about controlled and thoughtful growth, I think you need to be very, very specific about the type of growth. The previous speaker's talking about economic growth. I think he's talking about physical growth, building, development. And I think the master plan has to make a clear distinction of what type of growth you're talking about. I don't think anybody in the town is going to object to economic growth. That's going to start with taking a look at the existing commercial base, uh, retail base, business base maximizing utilization, because a lot of people are talking about the empty buildings in town. And if we could maximize that and bring more businesses into the existing buildings, we could definitely grow our economy without adding new buildings. I think if you, and, and it's been borne out with the surveys that are taking, nobody wants additional building in the town. We're overdeveloped physically. If I hear of one more multi-unit condo complex going up, I'm going to screen. I'm a, I'm a lifelong resident of Braintree as well. So I think there needs to be a much clearer distinction in the master plan of economic growth versus physical growth. And we need to work to build and grow the economic growth without adding additional buildings to the, to the town. Thank you. Thank you.
Hello. Christine Fitzgerald. I live on Lawson Lane in Braintree. I grew up on Brow Ave, so I'm a townie. I've been here forever. Um, a couple of things, and I know that we're all pressed for time, so I'm really just going to stick with um, the core theme three, which was the roads. And this is personal to me because growing up on Brow Ave, I can remember going to an adequate school, an elementary school. The sidewalks were always plowed. My kids grew up on Lawson Lane, and it was a good year if the sidewalks were plowed for them to get to school. And that's a very busy, congested area in there with all the little tributaries that go back and forth. So I guess my point is this, is that it's a great wish list that you all are working on, and thank you for that. But I think that we also need to focus on fixing some of the things that are in place right now. And of course, it always costs money, so I understand that as well. But if you're going to say that you're going to have the school children navigating to school um, independently and safely, they're not going to do that unless the sidewalks get plowed in a timely manner, meaning not at the end of a snowstorm, you know, when they've had to walk to school for five days, but to keep, keep protecting, protecting them. And the other thing that I want to talk about is just um, the roads in general. Um, I've been in my home for 32 years, and we've never had curbs. We've always had sidewalks. We never had curbs. Two years ago, I used to call, I used to come to the mayor's office all the time and say, when are they going to put curbs in on Lawson Lane. Well, two years ago, three years ago, they started that project. And I saw the nice granite curbs come in, and I was thrilled. Lo and behold, they went on a slant. And I'm thinking, what is going on here? So I called the Department of Public Works. I asked them tons of questions, I asked them why it, wasn't being, why it wasn't being done that way when the street next to me, Deacon Ave, the curbs were nice and flush with the sidewalk. He said, um, I said, did you go to, you know, did you get multiple bids? He said, yes. I said, what did you do, take the lowest bid? He said, yes, we did. OK, well, I guess you get what you pay for. So in a two block radius in my neighborhood, there are three different types of curbs. There's one granite curb that's flat, there's a granite curb that's sideways, and there's an asphalt curb going down Cane Ave. And when I asked him why that was done, he said that's to tell you the difference between if you're on a main road or a side street. And my thought is this, if you need to look at the curb to know if you're on a main road or a side street, you got a problem. So I'm just, I want, I guess my thing is this as well, is to make sure that with systems that we have in place are being viewed regularly regularly that there's a consistent format to everything because I feel like our properties have been devalued and I'm a townie I take great pride in my town Liz and I went to high school together way back when and I just want to see this town protected and maintained I take great pride in everything that we do and I think that what you guys are all doing to protect the integrity of this town and I want to see the systems that are in place being protected and being watched and being systematic across the board thank you very much thank you would anyone else like to speak? Please state your name and your address. John Fabiano, Putnam Ave, over by uh, Penniman Parking Lot. Um, my only comment was for Core Theme 3. I just thought it, you should specifically call out ADA compliance, uh, maybe in the second bullet point, uh, like a sub-bullet there, just because I know the town is involved in maybe a lawsuit involving ADA compliance. and. Um, and also, when you make these changes, and maybe this is like a phase three thing, like if you're making all these infrastructural changes, like a big part of that needs to be education to the residents so that they know what these markings on the street mean, so they know why they're there, how they should be used. Because I just feel like a lot of times, like around the Rotary, when you make all those changes there, you don't necessarily let the people know like, hey, these are there for this reason, and this is how they should be used. That's it. Thank you. Stephen O'Brien, District 4 Town Councilor, but tonight I'm coming as a uh, resident of Braintree, a longtime resident of Braintree, most of my life. And uh, I value what you guys have done here because I sniff very much what Mr. Flowers is getting at out of this document. But there's a few innuendos that give me great pause, uh, particularly the innuendo that came in from the uh, business group the other day to the council um, saying that they want more uh, density and I for one refuse to accept density. Um, if we go across to the other side of Boston uh, and look at Somerville, what happened to Somerville? Um, I had a two-family in Quincy and I thought I would never see a two-family in Quincy sell for a million dollars but the two families in Quincy are selling for a million dollars now. Over in Somerville, they've been selling for a million dollars for a long time. 
And you know why that is? Growth, growth, growth. No growth. I know we need managed growth. I know we need to pay for things, et cetera. But we have Braintree Hill Office Park. We have the, the, uh, the plaza. We have all these sections of town that we can enhance. If Messina would just lease out his properties, I couldn't imagine how much revenue we would get. But for some reason, the Messina properties lie fallow until the, the, the highest bidder comes, and I don't understand that. I think we need to sit down with them, and as a leader, the mayor needs to do this, um, and, and really negotiate on how we can get those buildings out of being uh, as desolate as they are. And there's several of them. Someone mentioned, I think on this body here, about a couple of the buildings that just, they, they are not in good shape. I really think there's a lot of opportunity there, but the buildings as they exist can be utilized. But they're underutilized. And this, the properties that the same build, builder owns over in other towns, you see they just sit there waiting for the highest bidder. So that's, that's uh, the, the bulk of it. I'm concerned about uh, bullet two and core theme two. Um, because it, it is fairly generic. I think that through strategic commercial growth could move up under bullet one and the rest of that can go away because I don't think this is a tax document so much as it is a vision document. And so I appreciate that. Um, overall though, aside from being a uh, fan of Mr. Flowers' commentary because I am definitely one that wants balanced growth, and I know we have to have some, but I think we can do it strategically and I think we'll do it right. Uh, at least I hope we'll do it right. Uh, but again, tonight I'm, I'm here as a resident. I'll have my opportunity to be on the bully pulpit as a uh, counselor. Uh, but again, I, uh, being a, um, a volunteer, quasi-volunteer, I do appreciate all your time and effort that's gone into this. And quite honestly, um, after seeing the, the amount of people that showed up to get us to this point, I think there's been a lot of listening to those people. And so I think there's been a lot of good intent here, but we don't want it to allow it to get rogue and us become a Somerville. I refuse us to become a Somerville. Please don't allow us to become a Somerville. And this will be the roadmap. I had many arguments with the previous administration about Somerville. He sat up at a podium and said, I don't want it to become a Somerville. But yet that, that roadmap that he put out brought this kind of crowd out. And I'm happy to see this kind of crowd. We should have double. But we will have double if a lot of this stuff moves forward the way it was in the beginning. So I thank you for your time. I thank you for listening to me. I hope I didn't uh, meander too much because I tend to do that. Uh, but hopefully my points were well taken. Thank, thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you. OK. So. What is the next so step, Jen? <laughs> I think given the time, it would be better to get through all the core themes yes. and not make decisions on revisions tonight. Could we take a bathroom break? I suppose, <laughs> if you must. <laughs> yeah, and then we can move on to core theme four and do the same okay. process so the and really just take comments tonight. The next yeah. section is housing. So if you could all, I know a, a lot of you are passionate about housing one way or the other. So if you could just stay. Um, am I wrong? It's not housing? Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so it, it would just like five minute bathroom break and then we'll start. So if you could bear with us and the public just a few more minutes. Perfect.
Hi, everyone. If we could all take our seats, we're going to start with the next core theme, which is housing. Everyone, if you could take your seat, we're going to jump right in. Jumping. <laughs> OK. Okay, so let's begin. We're gonna we're gonna do core theme. I can't even speak. Core theme four, as as its own, because there might be a lot of discussion. And Peter, if you don't, do can we start with you for core theme four? So same format, but right after this core theme, we'll go right to the audience. For the, the bolded uh, first sentence, my comments were that um, I think there should be more options for both young families and seniors. And that was revealed by the existing conditions report where the cost, average cost of homes, like other communities, is just outrageous and hard to afford for a lot of people. And then the rest of that sentence just doesn't sit well with me based on a lot of the comments and feedback and survey results. And so starting with smaller single family home, I would suggest replacing that with while preserving the existing neighborhoods. David. I too think we should be preserving existing neighborhoods. However, I also um, am not averse to changes that may be taking place in, in the town. Um, you know, if we have some areas where apartment buildings or con condominiums can be built, I'm not against that. I mean, if all we do is um, cling to what's already here, sooner or later, we won't be complaining about the present day Somerville. We'll be complaining about what Somerville once was. Uh, we need to enhance the neighborhoods that already exist, but if there are sections of the town where other housing alternatives can be built, um, I'm not against it. And I don't think we should be putting up walls around the town to make it difficult for people to live here, as it is. The people who graduate from schools in Braintree are going to have a very difficult time living in this town unless they make some very good income or unless they inherit. And I don't think we need to be doing that. I think we can. Uh, allow building to take place uh, in the areas that have not yet been developed. And let's face it, most of this town has been developed. So what we're going to be doing is building on the fringes or redeveloping areas that have fallen into um, underutilized places. So for purposes of um, number four, um, I'd like to see that we enhance um, our neighborhoods. And I also think that we can take advantage of certain areas that um, are strategic for purposes of uh, location near a train station, for instance. Um, if it's an empty building and some developer is interested in developing it into some form of housing, I'm not necessarily against it. And I'd like to make sure that we have a document that is welcoming people to the town, not trying to keep people away from the town. Shelley? I mean, I don't really 
have a lot to say about this comment. Um, I, I uh, agree with repurposing what we have um, in a way that you know people feel that supports the town. So let it be uh, a, a repurposing a building, but not going higher than so many you know stories or um, whatever the use may be or mixed use. But um, I, I am all about repurposing what we already have to make it better, more attractive, and um, you know make it open to all ages and stages of life. Erin. <laughs> Thank you. Um, with regards to the core theme, um, I think it would be, um, I think it would be good to keep the type of home ownership vague. I mean, home ownership comes in a lot of different forms. I mean, even an apartment is a home um, to, to whomever is living there. So I think to strike um, some of that wording, more options for home ownership for community members at all stages of life. I think trying to tie in this idea of freeing up affordable residences, I don't really, I don't really understand that thinking unless, unless somebody else has some more background on just that terminology. And then I would um, like to completely strike the third bullet and that is my commentary. Julia. Okay, so I would enhance community vitality. Um, and I would add the phrase, preserve and improve existing single family neighborhoods, because I know how important that is. That is a wish for Braintree residents to prevent commercial encroachment, to reduce cut through traffic, and also to see to it that our neighborhoods are tended to in terms of the infrastructure that's involved in them. People want their sidewalks to be paved. They need to make sure that the light poles work. They need to make sure that um, traffic is regulated with signage and there's a hope also for a police presence to control that. Um, I think, Pete, there's a wish for uh, additional neighborhood playgrounds, for example, and certainly for the roads to be paved and plowed appropriately at regular intervals. And so I think that preserving what we have and improving what we already have is really critical to add in this section. And then I would also add to plan and create a diversity of alternative housing options because um, It's worth adding because there's a strong feeling that we need additional senior and veteran housing, particularly service enriched housing. That was the number one form of housing that was um, represented on the survey and that can come in a lot of different forms. I, uh, I think that there should be an openness to how that gets approached by the people who are best uh, informed on, on how to make those systems work well. Um, so. I would like to, to leave a, the, an opening for alternative housing options with the knowledge that that's, that may be necessary to meet the number one in housing interest of Braintree residents. And then I would also add including affordable housing options because there is very high interest in Braintree in adding an inclusionary housing ordinance and the purpose of such an ordinance would be to produce affordable housing. Um, and so it, since that's where we are in this place and time, I think it makes sense to add that. And then um, in, the, in terms of the bullets themselves, um, I think I would, in the third bullet down, I would just ask that it change, be changed from promote single family and age restricted housing to a diversity of different housing options because I think uh, for reasons that I've already explained. <sighs> that's, those are my main comments. Okay, that's the third one. I, oh, I added a bullet. That's why. All right. It's your, okay, your turn. 
Um, not too much uh, anything different um, that hasn't already been mentioned, but um, specifically possibly the uh, removal of the, in the title, um, the bolded section about the single family home ownership or making that a little more vague perhaps just because um, ownership comes in different ways um, and also the enhancement and you know the pre preserving and protecting of the neighborhoods um, to keep them the way they were intended. Okay, so before I give my edits, I'll say that I'm very pleased that 1,750 people responded to the survey. And I want, it, many of you are in this audience, so I want, you to, I want to acknowledge that we hear you loud and clear. And I think 74% of you said you wanted service-enriched housing. 64% of you said you were highly interested in single family. And maybe around 60% not off the top of my head, wanted uh, senior housing over 55 housing. And I was able to do a meeting in a box at the senior center, and there is a real need for senior housing. They don't want to um, move to an apartment. They want to move to something along the lines of, they, they brought pictures for us to look at, but where the garages are connected and the single families go off to the side, they're not single families, I guess, at that point. But um, so, you know, I appreciate the feedback that we got, and I think um, I would never plan anything that goes against what the residents' will is. And we hear you loud and clear. So, a few of the things that you that you said you really don't want to see, um, very opposed to, is multifamily complex with amenities, fluster, flexible a cluster developments, and two-family homes and duplexes, and um, along with in small apartments on existing single-family properties. So with respect to housing, those are the things that the town spoke and is opposed to. So as a result, I, I am not going to say, yeah, build them, build them high, because I hear you, and I respect your opinion, and you live here, some of you many more years than I have lived here, so you know I'm not going to touch on that. But I do think um, we may want to look at low density controlled option that addressed the three the three areas that that you all said you wanted: over 55, service enriched housing, and um, smaller single family homes came up a lot because young people can't necessarily afford a larger home in Braintree or anywhere. I mean, it's, it, it's not a Braintree problem affordability. I, it's, we're cheap compared to other areas. Dave brought up Dorchester. Like, we're much cheaper to live than Dorchester. But so I do, um, so I do want to mention that. So, so I am opposed to high density housing and, but low density options that support the areas that you as a, as a community had said that you wanted, you know, I, I, I am for, obviously. Um, the first sentence of this says free up affordable, and I think we probably want to take that out because it's probably not affordable what we free up, so it may not make sense. Um, and then I added a bullet and it said actively promote an inclusive, diverse, and safe community for all Braintree residents and visitors. And I also added a bullet. I stole it from, I looked at everybody's master plans and Sorry, I- Sorry, Jenna, I'm behind. Can you say okay. the bullet you added? Actively promote an exclusive, diverse, and safe community for all Braintree, I feel like I'm talking too close, for Braintree residents and visitors. Okay, I'm not quite getting it, but that's okay. And I added another bullet, which I looked at a lot of different master plans and um, this I stole from Canton's master plan, but Braintree will recognize the challenge, challenges of its most vulnerable community members and rise to meet their needs. This includes seniors, veterans, and residents with special needs. And full disclosure, I also <laughs> added another bullet that said, Braintree will have a variety of low density housing choices focused primarily on senior housing, 55 plus housing, veterans housing, smaller single starter family homes, and service enriched housing. 
developments should be mindful of our resources, including water, electricity, climate change, and wildlife bridges and habitat. I wrote my it's migratory okay. I'm bird just patterns, but we can to probably leave that out. I, I'm not getting it all here, but that's okay. Okay, I yeah. can send it to yeah, you yeah, too. That's okay. Okay, I am done. All set. Thank you. Um, my first change would be in the actual, in, would be the first statement of core theme number four. I believe it is too restrictive uh, in saying that uh, promote uh, single family home ownership. I think that needs to be expanded uh, amongst the choices um, that I think this community has called for. I too have read the results. Uh, I have talked to many residents in my role as a, as a district counselor, also in the role in this, and I do hear a lot. I hear a lot about a diversified housing inventory need. Um, you know, Dave Cunningham spoke earlier about the ability to buy a home in this community by folks who are young, who have just got out of college, who are maybe paying for colleges, who have other expenses trying to raise families, and they can't afford to buy in this community unless they've got an extraordinary well-paying job. Um, at a young age. So, you know, th these are, or perhaps, you know, th they're limited to opportunities of, you know, maybe inheriting the home, or buying it from a friend or a family member or something of that nature. And those seem to just more or less the exceptions. I think what we need to do is we need to promote, you know, we talk about our community and, and we want to build and foster a growth, a, a community. And I think that is the more uh, positive path that we need to follow. I think that um, diversified, diversifying Braintree's housing inventory and preserving existing neighborhoods are not exclusive from one another. I think that there is an opportunity for us. There are areas of redevelopment near train stations that are not going to infringe upon our single family neighborhoods, which are a treasure in our community. We, I mean, that, that is one theme that we hear from everybody here this evening is preserving our residential neighborhoods. And I don't think anyone here wants to impinge upon that, want to uh, degrade that part of our community character. Um, I think what we need to do is we need to create, and this could be, uh, uh, another bullet, but create, it, create and maintain a minimum affordable housing percentage um, of the total number of Braintree households that will keep us above uh, that 10% number, which is a looming number always in the town of Braintree. We're, we're already still, right in my district alone, uh, the Holland Project. That is a prime example of what 40B can do to destroy a neighborhood, to, to really harm a community. When you're trying to put 10 pounds of stuff in a five pound bag, it becomes an awful mess. So, with careful planning, with opportunities for areas that can handle multi-unit housing, and we can debate about the density and the need, but we do need to diversify our housing inventory in Braintree. Thank you. Raina? Raina? Well, um, I agree with Joe, I think, on this discussion, and, and actually also with Dave. I think that there are some opportunities in certain locations where you could have a variety of housing, not high density, but not single family. I don't want to shut that door. I think, I think that was like, that's like an invitation. It's like a death spiral if you just say, no growth, no development. That's, that's a dying community. So I think we need to leave the door open and you know, be a little bit open. Sometimes people will walk in the door with a really great idea that none of us ever thought of, that you know, would have some townhouses like you were describing. That's kind of what they were when they're attached at the garage but you have more open space, you could have connections to the river, you could have connections to other recreation, but you do that with a little bit of flexibility. And I think you're right, it's not exclusive to want to keep and protect your neighborhoods, keep density low, and still have some growth, whether it's housing, commercial. But of course, I think 
uh, others who said, you know, really, we need to better utilize what we have. Absolutely. That's like at the top of my list. But I don't have anything new, I think, other than to support what David said and Joe and, and Julia too. And actually, I think you guys too. Maybe both of you. <laughs> that was Shelley and Erin. <laughs> okay. Yeah. List. Okay, I have quite a few comments. Um, first off, I totally have a problem with striking the third bullet point, create land use policies that promote single family and age restricted. I agree, maybe we should add service enriched housing there as well. And this will result in more uh, um, affordable, wouldn't be the correct word, but it would free up housing for starters or families. The thing that strikes me the most here is that we as a town in this master plan process, and it is a process, put out a survey to the residents, 700 and, uh, I'm sorry, 1,740 people responded. That was a phenomenal response. And this section brought about a very, very strong sentiment, and people feel the town is being overdeveloped, overpopulated, and we do not want to be urbanized when the only thing we're looking at or promoting is multifamily density and high density and multifamily, then you're going to add up with large population increases. And the residents said they don't want that. And I can really feel very comfortable representing the, the concerns of Braintree residents and their biggest wants were to preserve the single family home neighborhoods, to create senior and starter homes, and also veterans and um, age-restricted housing. So we got all this information from our survey. We spent tens of thousands of dollars on this survey. I think we should be listening to it. This is great information. We can't just say because everybody thinks it's a great idea. Braintree's not going to solve the high cost of housing because we put in a lot more multifamily housing. That's a regional problem. It's a country problem. It's not up to our master plan to solve that. I think we should be listening to what our residents are telling us, and I think that we need to not urbanize our town, and I feel very strongly about it. Thank you. Justine. Uh, thank you. Um, at the beginning, when you talk about we need to speak with our experience and our heart, I got three college kids. Every time they come home to Braintree, they told me, Mom, this is where home is during holiday. So this is why I'm here as a member of the, this community, because I want to preserve where my kids are able to come home and after college, they're able to buy uh, property here. Um, I live in Flaherty. The history of Flaherty neighborhood was a backfill from the reservoir. Um, doing after World War II, it's all slammed houses, small single houses for the veteran come home, so they were able to afford to build a family there. Every time you see, we have a lot of elderly people around the neighborhood watching the kids running around because they don't have place to move out, and every one of those small houses being sold, a new family came in with a small child. We see family that just got married, have three kids over a couple, three, couple years. So with why I'm here, because I want to keep that single family feeling of a suburban so that my kids able to afford to at least put their down payment after college by small home where they have a land for the kids to run and where they can able to touch the grass. I'm not 
against um, expanding development, but we need to look at where we have talking about preserved life in suburban, where when we build houses, can we build place small enough for kids, for our college to come home to afford? Can we build townhouse where the people can actually go to the backyard, touch the grass? and had the parking space right in front of the houses instead of high-rise building where, um, example, COVID is a good example of where when you're in a high-rise building, you run into issue of, um, you know, ear space and everything else. So I, my perspective, I want small houses. When I retire, I want to be able to have the opportunity to move to 55 plus so my kids I free up the space that my future kids can, my kids can come home able to buy smaller houses. If I need to move in the um, group home, I'd rather have to walk into my backyard and able to touch the grass. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we'll take audience public participation. If you could just give your name and yes. your address. Hi, I'm Megan. I live at 34 Blanchard Boulevard in Braintree. Um, I have three strains of my comments. I talk fast. I hope that I can say within two minutes <laughs> and speak clearly. So first of all, um, you know, I'm someone who's guilty of not attending these meetings as much as I should. Um, and I wonder about the demographics for survey respondents. As you'll notice, most of the people in this room are seniors. Not a bad thing, not a bad thing at all. But <laughs> I love seniors. But that's going to skew the results. You know, a lot of people here, I'm here because my husband cooked dinner for our kids, put them in bed on their own. A lot of people left because they had babysitters. You probably have kids who are home with, their, with your grandkids who I, aren't here to speak. If I could clarify. clarify. Sorry, I'm looking at you. Well, you said on the survey the seniors, seniors actually were, the, were right underrepresented because. Okay because of the computer issue, so, so. Well, seniors are also very good at computers Yeah, as well. so I, I, did, I just wanted but to clarify But also in the that. meeting as well, people, people who are homeowners in the town are largely people who show up to these meetings, I think. Um, so there's not a full representation, not through any fault of you guys, but just by the nature of how life goes. People let things go, they're too busy, they let it go. I do think the term starter home needs to be striked from this language. A starter home now is over $500,000, if not $600,000. There's no starter home, single family home to be had. Um, and that's, you know, a starter home you think maybe 300,000, 350, something that a person could afford a few years out of college. You know, after I graduated from college, I lived in an apartment, then I lived in a duplex, then I went back to an apartment, then I went, moved in with my parents, you know, then I went back to a duplex then I bought a house with my husband. So there's room, people who are living in apartments, they might be people who work in Boston. They're not gonna be a drain on the resources other than the building itself, but they'll contribute to our taxes and help out the community as a whole, and they're still members of the community, um, even though they don't live in a single family home. And then the data that you shared in the first round, it said there's a mismatch between the number of people per household and the number of bedrooms per household in Braintree. Although over half of households are comprised of only one or two members, only 12% of housing units are studio or one bedrooms, and 25% are studio, one bedroom, or two bedroom units. So this shows me that there's probably a need for smaller, um, and not just smaller homes, but apartments or duplexes. Again, I, no one wants a high rise, I don't think. Maybe they do. I don't want a high rise. But I do want an um, openness to non-single family homes. Um, I love this town. Obviously, I'm here because I care. Um, but the strength and diversity, whether you're talking about people or stock options, and that's the same with housing, you know, and you guys are doing a great job. It's a lot of work. Um, but I just want to make sure that we don't close doors, like many people said, to the future. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, so long. Does anyone else have a comment? Just please state your name and your address. Bill Crockett, um, an adequate avenue. Um, we live in a capitalist society. Um, if we lived in a vacuum, a lot of these ideas would be great, but um, high-density housing 
the developers who, who develop these, they're going to want top dollar because Braintree is, draws a top dollar. So are our kids going to be able to even afford a condo? Are they going to be able to pay for the rent in an, an apartment in Braintree? I have adult children that can't afford to live in an apartment. Um, it's lucky that they can live at home right now. Um, you know, rents are two, three thousand, four thousand dollars a month. And why is Braintree going to be any different? Braintree will demand high prices. Um, so high density units are not helping people looking for housing. It's just going to bring people out of the city to live in an apartment building in Braintree. And that's going to affect our resources, um, our water, trash. Everything else is, is affected by high density. Um, within 100 yards of, of my home on Monadequate Avenue, I've had three pork chop lots developed on um, and large houses put on these, um, these lots. Um, we went to the planning board to try to stop this, but because Braintree didn't plan ahead, um, there was nothing we could do to stop these houses from being squeezed in, these gigantic houses being squeezed in. That's three big houses within 100 yards of my home. I've lived there 32 years. Um, we, we have to get ahead of this. If we open Pandora's box to, well, yeah, we can put high-density housing here um, where it's away from everyone. Well, we've, we've already talked about the, the rotary is dangerous, but we're going to put high-density housing around the rotary. There's cause and effect to everything we do, and if we open the door, it's going to happen because it has happened in the past with Braintree. We don't think ahead. We have to think ahead on this. Thank you. Just please state your name and address again. Al Barisi, I live at 117 Pond Street. Uh, I work in, in, I have a consulting practice and part of what I do is talent acquisition. I'm going to tell you right now, I, I place a lot of people and I don't know many recent college graduates that can put a down payment on a home. It doesn't happen. So I think that's a misnomer if you're using that as one of the, the prerequisites. I, I really feel the survey isn't being listened to. I think when you know, you're talking about you have no problem with high density development, I get that. And to use Mr. Reynolds' analogy, you're trying to put 10 pounds of stuff in a five pound bag. Well, now we're gonna make it 12 pounds and then we're gonna make it 15 pounds. It's, we can't handle it. And if you look at the comments that were made about the first three core themes, we're talking about water, we're talking about traffic, safety, high density is just gonna put a greater stress on that. We won't have to worry about improving our roads. We're gonna to have to start maintaining the parking lots because that's what these roads are gonna turn into. I really don't think, and, and I understand a diversity of housing, absolutely. More senior housing, more veteran housing, and single family starter homes that, you know, maybe someone who's been out of college for 10 or 12 years has established a career and can put a down payment on a home, absolutely. But by putting up these high density dwellings because people want to move into Braintree, it sounds like we're putting their wishes ahead of the wishes of people that already live in Braintree. We don't want high density housing in this community. We're overdeveloped as it is. Thank you. Thank you. If you just could state your name and address. <coughs> Kelly Moore, 46 Hollow Ave. The residents have spoken. Listen to what they said. Your priority, if it's not in line with the residents, is the wrong priority. Pure and simple. I bought my first house. I was 32. Some might say, well, you just got out of college then. So, no, I didn't. 
I was 32. You don't buy your first house when you're right out of college. In today's day and age, you're lucky to be able to afford an apartment. Listen to the residents. Listen to the residents. That's all I got. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you all for the work you're doing. Greatly appreciated by the residents of Braintree. And um, as Kelly and others have spoken about, uh, I hope you're listening because uh, it's very important. Um, I've lived in Braintree since 1962. I moved here from Quincy with my parents just out, out of high school. Um, I moved to Jefferson Street after I met my wife, and she's been in Braintree since, her family has, since the roads were dirt. Um, but one of the key issues that we're struggling with now um, is overpopulation and you know, too much development and so forth and so on. But this is key. The water, the resources we have to sustain people, uh, and it's getting worse and worse. Um, you go by, which I travel by the, uh, the reservoir every day almost, and it's, it looks like a giant straw was stuck in there and sucked out. It's empty on the Randolph side again. In the past 10 years, we've had a couple of pretty severe droughts. This, this year's was a, an example of that. I have a well in my backyard, and in early July, it was almost empty. Um, I have a 35-foot siphon in it, and that was no longer working. Um, so I rely on the town water for a while until the end of the summer, and then we get some more rain. But that's a serious issue. Um, so high density development in this community doesn't and shouldn't work. Um, I agree with the folks that mentioned, you know, single housing and so forth, and businesses that can move into a business, businesses that have left. I worked at Hayman Edx for 10 years. Um, they were offered a tax break to stay in Braintree on Wood Road but competition and the 2.5% uh, tax on um, medical devices in competition drove them out of the town of Braintree. So we have to be very careful with what we do with our town. Um, and when I moved out of Quincy, my dad was saying that Quincy's starting to overdevelop, and that was in 1962. Um, so my brother and his, and his son still lives there, and I travel there every week to visit them, and it's a disaster. I've even tried to call and talk to the mayor of, of, of Quincy to get the roads fixed, and they got part of it fixed. He's got other things on his mind. And when you drive through the city of Quincy, you'll see what it is, okay? It's a disaster. Is that what we're looking for here? I don't think so. At least the residents aren't. The ones that are standing up and speaking out. We have to be careful what we do, or we're going to run out of this. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Sir, can we take your hand? One more. Thank Hi, Steve Shasha, Hollis Ave. You know, I'm, I'm listening to people that took the time to come here tonight. 
And what they're saying is just what residents in the survey said, which is no surprise to anybody. There's somewhere they're circulating around this room a list of 400 of the 500 comments in the housing section that say something to the effect of no more building, town has grown too much, community is already saturated. I mean, it's just one after another. So, you know, this is supposed to be a 10 year plan. We're, we're not talking about the future of Braintree. We're talking about 10 years. And in the past 10 years, we've been told we need to keep growing, but we'll do it really well. Don't worry about it. It won't increase the traffic. It won't have an impact on the schools. Don't worry. We're going to do it really well. And we've watched our schools continue to degrade. I mean, how many people stood up here and, and made a comment about the traffic? You cannot keep putting more housing onto, I mean, the places where it's logical would be the main streets, Ivory Street Court or Washington Street. Those are all feeder roads into our neighborhoods. You, you, cannot, you cannot have both. That doesn't mean that both are not possible, but what this is saying is we don't want you making us promises anymore. Show us the plan first. If you want to think about housing in the Ivory Street corridor, show us a plan. Show us what you're going to do to mitigate traffic. Show us, if you look at the original Ivory Street corridor plan, it had acres and acres of open space, open access to the river, walking paths into Braintree Square. It was comprehensive, and that kind of plan makes things better, not just for people that want to move here, but for the people that live here. And unless you can show us some kind of a plan, I don't think it's that unreasonable for residents to say that during the next 10 years, let's do this. Let's not keep building. Let's focus on our schools. Show us that you can follow through on making traffic improvements. Show us that you can follow through on doing these things for the residents. And then let's talk about growing more. And in the meantime, you know, everybody wants to talk about the abandoned properties. Nobody is arguing that those shouldn't be reused, right? The, the, those properties have been sitting there for 15 years. We've been having the same discussion. Maybe part of this discussion needs to be how do we expedite that? I mean, there are avenues that the town can take that nobody really wants to talk about, like eminent domain, but you know, it's time to come up with a real plan. And my fear is that if the master plan is vague in terms of what residents are looking for, when they're specifically saying small starter homes, senior housing, and service prov uh, provisions, if we leave the master plan vague, as some people have suggested, then anybody that disagrees with it, and I know there are some people here that do, We'll use that to say, well, look, people said they want a variety of housing options. That gives us free license to support 500 units at the mall, 300 units at the, here, right? And, and we know that's what we're going to get because that's what we've gotten over the last 10 years. So I think if, if you're listening to the residents, this plan needs to specifically refer to what they're telling you they want to see. Thank you. Do my name and address again. Yes. Sarah DeMeo, Academy Street. Um, I wasn't going to speak on this one. I was going to speak on the preamble, which is at the end, right? Um, but I have to go. And so the point I was going to make about the preamble, I'll make it here because it, it kind of relates, I mean, it does relate to housing. Um, I oppose four story apartment buildings with 10 foot setbacks in established residential neighborhoods, very much so. I was against it a few years ago. I'm grateful to the people who uh, helped to draw attention to that. Um, so yes, I oppose that. I'm hearing a lot of other things that I do disagree with, um, and I'm a little concerned about the emphasis on single family homes. I grew up in a multifamily, so uh, that was in the preamble, but it's being brought up here too. I'm, I'm a little confused, honestly about this uh, emphasis, sort of uh, putting people into groups and then 
assigning those groups to a hierarchy, and there seems to be like single family homeowners and residents are in a higher group. I, I don't understand what's going on with that. Um, obviously, a young couple, 30 years old, paying 40, 50 percent of their income towards rent, or a younger person who wants to get out of their parents' base, basement, they're not filling out surveys and coming to these meetings. Okay, um, so I got here, great, but I feel like I should probably speak on behalf of some people who aren't, who didn't fill out the surveys. They're still residents. They still may have kids in our school system. Um, there might be people who just lost their job. They have their single family home. Um, going through a divorce, now they need two homes. There's lots of reasons that people are concerned about housing and they're not here at this meeting and they're not filling out the surveys. So I don't want my neighborhood disrupted. I love my single family home in my neighborhood. Uh, there's multi-families on my street too and I hope they are included in the preamble but in this vision as well. Um, so I would just encourage you all to not be necessarily stigmatizing people who are either renters or live in condos. Some people don't want to cut the grass. You know, they want to live in a condo. I might not want to live there, but someone else might. And there's an awful lot of them in Braintree, okay? And they buy pizza and they go to the shops and they pay taxes into the town in a number of different ways, whether it's through property taxes via rent or through uh, meals taxes. So they're all here and I just, I'm uncomfortable when I see language in here that seems to be saying that single family homeowners are most important. So, thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else? Oh, okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Sean Powers, Hancock Street. This is the first time I've actually sat for um, the council that I had the honor to serve on for 10 years. Thank you all for your, actually put my timer on so I don't go over to it. Um, time is precious and it's getting late. Thank everyone for your uh, work um, on this town. I also want to thank everyone for showing up and also the uh, over 1,700 residents that filled out the survey. Um, that shows a high level of engagement. If I could get 1,700 respondents to a political survey, maybe they'd be a little bit more accurate than the ones that we just saw in the last election cycle. Uh, but I've lived in Braintree my whole life. I'm a proud Braintree High School graduate, uh, class of 99, proud uh, Braintree Womp. Um, and I would just say that um, I can't stress how important it is to increase our affordable housing stock to reach the 10% um, that is the state requirement. Um, one, it expands affordable housing options, but two, it allows greater control for the town uh, over its future housing production plans. And we have greater control and oversight when a developer tries to come in with a 40B and we can say that we've met our threshold and that plan's just not gonna work. So the other thing I talked to was a lot of, uh, of, of my fellow friends that have parents that still live in Braintree. They live in a three or four bedroom house. They wanna stay in Braintree, but there's nowhere for them to go. Um, and they wanna sell that house and free up that inventory for people with families. So they need over 55 housing, and that was one of the housing options that is being proposed, and I think we should embrace that. I think that allows folks that want to stay in Braintree can and free up that inventory for younger families um, to stay in Braintree. I didn't buy my house till I was 39 years old. I didn't expect to buy a house right out of college. I, I mean, I was in a fortunate situation where I didn't have as much college debt as some other students have today, but that's not the focus of the master plan. Um, but I think that we need to be very careful about the stresses on our infrastructure, the stresses on our services, police and fire. Um, it seems like the call volume just keeps going up and up for our police and fire every year. Um, so 
I just wanted to add that. I think the affordability and reaching the 10% is critical and that we can have greater control over our future housing uh, production plans. Everyone I've spoke to that is concerned about, you know, growth and development, you know, they're not against, you know, new housing. Um, but that housing has to work for us and it has to fit appropriately within our community. But thank you all for your hard work. Appreciate it. Alan Flowers, 48 Fallon Circle. I, the, the point is we don't have the resources or the infrastructure for any more apartment blocks. And, and the best advertisement for that is in, in uh, the landing. We don't need anything more like that. So if the master plan has a provision to encourage apartment buildings, it would probably be better not to have a master plan. Hello, um, Carrie Fitzgerald, Lavolia. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to point out, so I have a lot of friends who um, have lived in Somerville and Cambridge, and I think the difference between kind of what we're trying to do and preserve the heart of Braintree is the fact that we have a niche here where it is a community that is very family-oriented and very much kind of um, not a stepping stone, and a lot of the places that have all of this housing and all of these apartment complexes, which the vast majority of people here are trying to avoid, um, tend to kind of be a stepping stone where people go after school, but not where they land for kind of building a family, and I think that that's what we need to focus on, and that's kind of the heart of what should be going forward in this master plan. Very good point, thank you. Good evening, folks. Um, my name is Andy Kay, uh, 31 Forest Street. Um, a lot of people here have spoken about their Braintree heritage. I am uh, Braintree by choice, not by birth. Um, I came here, I rented a three-bedroom condo um, and lived here for five years. Like the town, decided we wanted to settle here. Um, didn't have a lot of money for a down payment. Did an FHA loan, 3.5% down, I moved into a four-bedroom um, house over in the Highlands. I paid less money. There is a belief that a lot of these units that come in are going to make it more affordable for people. It's really not the case. It's not the case here. It's not the case in, in Quincy. It's not the case in Somerville. Um, these units are really expensive. Overall, um, about three years ago, we went to renovate the home, and I moved... Uh, we moved temporarily to Lennox Farms while we were doing the renovation. The rent that we were paying there, I could have paid the mortgage on an $800,000 $800, house. Um, again, what's being pitched as affordable housing and, and more units um, and apartments are gonna make this and condos are gonna make this more affordable for people, it's just not true. It's not the reality of the situation. Um, you know, overall, the other thing I just wanted to mention is um, the surveys. I participated in the survey. Um, we had a town hall that was done on the weekend. Uh, you know, it was a month or two ago. Um, I think it allowed people that might not ordinarily be able to participate uh, on a weeknight to come in and discuss. I think that the comments that I saw, we put all the dots everywhere. They really seem to affirm a lot of the stuff that was in the survey. And, I'm a little bit concerned because I think that there were some voices around the table that had made some statements that are not congruent with what we have, um, what we have within the survey. It is now what, nine something in the evening. We haven't gotten e to updating these statements. Um, I'm very concerned that what comes out of this may be different than what was in the survey, that what was affirmed within the town hall. Um, doing something like that I don't know when this is gonna finish, 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night. If these things are significantly watered down or are significantly different, it's gonna feel like a big hit and run. This has been a process that's been going on for a year, the better part of a year. Um, to change it late in the evening significantly from what's here just feels wrong and it doesn't feel like it's the will of the residents. So, thank you. Thank you. 
Would anyone else like to speak? Okay. Jen? <laughs> what now? <laughs> Sorry, I just really had to sit down. <laughs> okay. So I think we should move on rather than trying to make revisions tonight. I, I actually agree. I can't remember his name, but the fellow who just spoke, I think it's going to be too much for us to try to go back and make revisions tonight. So if we can just find another meeting date to do a part two of this. But it would be great to finish up the vision statement with core theme five and then circle back to the overall if everybody's up for that. But I do know it's nine o'clock already. And so I just want to be respectful of that. And um, Chair Wadlin, it's more up to you and the committee than me, but I just wanted to recognize the time. And if you wanted to continue to part two of this now rather than continuing or continue through the rest of this and take comments until we're done with just this part and then leave the revision part for later. I think we should probably move on. Keep moving through this. Keep moving. That's fine. That's fine yeah. with me. I mean, does any does anyone disagree? Or I'm not dug in either way. <laughs> so okay. And uh, Madam Chair, so and awesome comments tonight. Really, it, it's it's really been. I'm just jotting and jotting and jotting. So we have core theme five, and we, we can obviously get through that. There was some substantial comments this evening, and I don't know if it's beneficial if Jen kind of takes all of that and, you know, we're all jotting things down, but kind of puts that into something so that, and then everyone gets that, everyone sees those changes and we can chip away. We like this revision, we don't. I, 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 I honestly don't think we're gonna get through this core theme and then going back to every single one with everything that was said tonight. Cause there is, there's been a lot of awesome comments, but a fair amount, some overlap, some different, I mean, you're the chair, it's your call. Yeah. It is getting late. Um, My only concern is transparency. So we really want this, pro like this whole process to be an open and honest and transparent process where the oh. resident feedback and like the public came out and the resident feedback from the survey and from the public is all into consideration. I, it can't just be like us rolling. No, I don't, I don't disagree with that, but we would have part two. And, and that would be when we have all of those comments yeah. in front of us um, and everyone's able to see all of that. I'm not sure if everyone's kind of jotting everything down as well. And then we'd all have that document and we would be able to refine each one. Obviously, if you wanna go, go at this, we're obviously here. Um, I just don't know how effective it will be um, without everybody being able to sort of have all those materials um, available. And I'm happy to share my I mean, I could share this with all the comments. I've been typing away on comments. Um, I think what I would be reluctant to do is try to make revisions based right, on I that. But I would be, sh you know, if I could share that with the committee, if you want to put it on the website so people can see the comments that came in and then have another meeting to go through and try to decide on some revisions. Could, could we get all of your email addresses? Because I would want to be very transparent and open with all of you so that you see so you all gave your feedback and that you see what then comes out of this meeting so it's not, um, so it's very transparent. Why don't, I, I have a suggestion. Um, okay. Jen can do what she said she was gonna do. Okay. We'll post it on the website. Anybody can access it even if they're not here tonight, which obviously there might be people that are watching from home as well that can't be with us. Uh, we do have the date for December 15th um, we're inviting the council and the planning board that night as well, but this body will be the, the sort of the governing body and we can start at six o'clock again and get through um, part two of this um, and then do the update that we were going to do. Okay, that's, that's fine. Let's move on, but I, I would feel better getting everyone's email addresses so that we can make sure because they did show up and sometimes you miss things on the website. So if, if we could pass around a sheet of paper to get email addresses for everyone so we can. We'll, we'll have that. All right, that would be fabulous. So we can move on to court. We're moving. Five. All right. <laughs> All right, so this is the one about uh, public facilities, infrastructure and services. And so um, Chair Wadland, did you want to start? Which direction did you want to start in today? Or for, now, not today. We'll go back with Peter. <laughs> so at core five, theme five, um, I would just, 
raise the visibility of uh, schools in this by in, uh, inserting it right between modernized and public in the in the first sentence. David. I have no opposition to the way it's worded, okay. but I'm also open to um, the concept of adding to it so that it takes into consideration um, the ability to actually produce these buildings within our um, resources. Uh, and also uh, requiring that they be maintained in accordance with our resources. Uh, that's it. Okay. Shelley. Um, I agree with what everybody said. Um, this one is near and dear to my heart, and as much as people are talking about number four, number five, I think, is just as important. The people of Braintree have spoken. Um, one of the biggest things in the town has been the accessibility to Boston, the low tax rate, and our schools. And um, our schools, as we can all agree, and most of us are probably here for, are in dire need. We've taken some steps recently with East and now South. Um, the high school has to be like front and center on this number five. Um, it, it, we just really need help in this uh, department and all the teachers and the people that do the best they can with what they're given. Um, I really respect what they do and what they do it with. And um, so yeah, public school facilities, front and center, just like you said, and that's really all I have. Erin. I don't have any significant comments on core theme five. I would just um, like to add on bullet point number three, I would like to add the utility of stormwater after sewer for the infrastructure that um, to include. Thank you. Julia. Uh, I think Braintree's problem historically has been that we never plan to replace anything. Um, and so what I would what I begin this heading with is I would begin it with prioritize fiscal planning because if you want to replace anything, it's incredibly expensive. And you have to plan to meet those expenses pretty much as soon as you've built something, realistically, because the price tag is so, so high. So you have to prioritize fiscal planning and implementation for new, expanded, and modernized public facilities, infrastructure, and services. And what I would add is, and sound maintenance thereof. Because maintenance will get you a pretty long way. And it, if we're gonna take our municipal dollars and invest them in these facilities which people need, I think that they should, there should be a plan for maintaining them. You know, we shouldn't wait for a roof to blow off before we replace a roof. In terms of the bullet points, um, I guess, my main concern is the bullet points are get a little specific. Like when you get to the second bullet point, it talks about outdoor adult family and youth recreational facilities that are regularly cleaned and maintained. I think that's great. And then it specifically lists Peterson swimming pool and ice rink, tennis and pickleball courts, and an expanded river walk along the Manatequit River. To me, these specific items um, are a, either a limited list or in some cases redundant because we have new pickleball courts. Um, so I, I would avoid that kind of specificity. Um, I mean, and then the last bullet point, results-oriented town officials who get things done effectively. I think our town officials are held accountable by the, 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 the democratic system of electing them. And if they just don't get things done, they're not results oriented, 
they will be voted out of office just like anywhere else in the country. So um, I would just strike that. And in, ter in terms of ensuring sound fiscal policies to provide the community with the high quality facilities and services, that I would keep, but I think it's already folded in to prioritizing fiscal planning and implementation. So there is. Sure. And this is the last bullet. Do you have the very last bullet? Yes, the very, very last bullet. Could you just repeat that, Jonathan? I just missed it. Sorry. The I'm last bullet? Yeah. As it's written, says ensure sound fiscal policies to provide the community with the high quality facilities and services the residents want while keeping residential property taxes low. I think this is related to results oriented town officials and which I think is just you have to be results oriented or there is a implement there is a mechanism in place to remove you from power and prioritize fiscal planning and implementation really gets at the rest of it. So I, I think the last bullet is really either redundant or because of the systems that are already in place or because of things that are already said. Okay, Kay? Um, my comments were along the lines of um, people who had previously gone like Shelley about the, the schools. Um, I feel like in this report or this vision, we probably don't emphasize the schools enough, and I don't know if it's here or in the overall statement. Like, our property values are high because of our schools, but, like, neglecting them for 10 years or more, like, we're, we're like, building a hole. I know we're trying to get out of it now, but, but um, and I know that, that other towns have master plans for schools, and I think we should. Um, but um, I do think we, we probably need more emphasis. Like, you know, we, we, I noticed on Winchester's it says, we, you know, we enjoy pristine school, or high priority schools or some, something along those lines. But so um, I think we need to put more resources into the schools from an infrastructure standpoint and, and give more tools to these teachers that have been holding it up. Um, and then I thought about why is this, transparency thing and why is this accountable thing in this um, master plan I thought it was silly and then Peter said no it's not it, like not silly because we need transparency and there have been times in the history of Braintree where there hasn't been and and it always backfires and so I you know when he said that I was like you know what we do need transparency and sometimes we need to be reminded that we need honest and transparent processes to ensure that rep, the, the residents are represented. And, you know, and I think that needs to be in there. Jeff. Okay, thank you. Um, I think that from a public infrastructure, we should be calling out uh, more specifically our school building, our physical plants. <laughs> Obviously, as uh, the chair has said that I also believe there's a direct correlation between the value of our, our homes uh, and the quality of our public schools, without a doubt. Um, I'm also a little bit concerned about people's idea of the master plan as being specifics. And there was a comment made, I believe, by uh, Councilor Flaherty about that. A master plan is a guideline for our community. Plain and simple. The tools that come after the master plan are what actually sets policy. Our leaders, our elected leaders, set policy based on these guidelines that we are given. We also select and prioritize what those projects and specifics that we are going to attack, whether they be how we create more revenue for our community so that we can pay for all of these initiatives. But I think from a I think the thinking, if, if we think that the master plan is going to be a by the numbers action plan with specifics, we're overdoing it. A master plan is needed. It's absolutely needed. But it is a guideline in the step of the process where we get our elected officials who will be accountable as, as uh, Councilor Flaherty also said, or they'll get voted out. 
So I think we do need to be a bit careful about getting down in some areas where we do use guideline language and other areas we use very specifics. So transparency is always, always a priority. I think that says it. Thank you. Raina. The only thing that I wanted to raise, I think it was raised earlier, was it was suggested that in, this would be the area to put in, um, call out the water supply. And I don't know exactly what we want to say, except that that is an important, um, you know, infrastructure facility that really affects everything. <laughs> so I think, I just didn't want to forget that we want to, I think it's probably maybe, maybe an extra bullet, which would talk about supply and conservation and you know, better management. We had talked offside about, you know, some of the upgrades that go on with piping and I and I and that kind of thing, which has to do with management and upgrades and that sort of thing. That, that's all I had. Liz? Um, I also agree. I think the schools need to be given a much stronger emphasis in this section. Um, I do agree with all of these. I think in the last bullet point, results-oriented town officials, board, and committee members, um, getting things done effectively, I would like to add it in transparently. Um, not all of officials are elected. Some of them are appointed. So I think, you know, you don't always get rid of people in an election if they don't function effectively and transparently. So I think that is important, and I think it's extremely important to value and respect the community input. That kind of goes hand in hand, because there have been points in times where people have not felt like their concerns and opinions are valued at Town Hall in some of these meetings. And they're not, um, Sometimes the residents feel like they're being overlooked. So I think it's very important that this be part of our master plan. And um, I do also think that we need to put the water supply infrastructure in here as well. Justine. OK. Um, I'm with um, four kids, my last kids in high school right now. Of course, high school poverty facility is my high priority. Um, However, with a family that who's not shy with special need kids, um, I would like to, on the second bullet, where after the library, include um, faci public facility for inclusive special need residents and ADH compliance, playgrounds or public facility. That's what I would like to see in our master plan. Um, you know, kids with sensory, kids that with special need, occupational therapy perspective. We don't have a park like that in Braintree. When I was in um, Fall River, there was a nonprofit organization that built a park just specifically for special need, handicapped autism kids. This is what I wanted to make sure we address that inclusiveness of the Braintree, who we are and uh, for special need residents and for handicap compliance. Okay, so next, I think, is, is the, yes. And the um, water, I just had a recommended bullet point to add on the water supply, okay. if that would Please. be all right to add. Um, so preserve, protect, and expertly manage our water supply against changes in land use and redevelopment. Okay, so, can, yeah, go ahead, please. Sure, thank you. So just an additional point on that water management, um, the infrastructure, I think it's important for us to also offer that there are solutions, there are methods for us to be able to increase our water supply in Braintree that exist today uh, that were undertaken in the past but were never followed through and I think Mr. Uh, um, who was it that made that comment? Dick. 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 Okay. Wenzel. Wenzel. Dick Wenzel made that comment earlier. As a member he did recount uh, a project for dredging uh, in the Rich Rishardi Reservoir 
So there are opportunities. There is also another opportunity to expand the reservoir, uh, Great Lake Reservoir. So I think we need to pursue those. I'm not asking for those to be specific, but in a general sense, I think what we also need to, we need to add in that particular topic is pursue new sources of reservoir capacity. Okay. Um, so we have the overall vision statement. Does the public want to speak on this or should or do you want to wait until we do the overall and then you can come up so we'll do the next one and then any comments you can come up or do you want to speak now? You want to speak now? Please, yeah. We, we move into the overall after the public comments. I just want to touch on um, some public facilities. Um, Concerning the youth sports, we Braintree is, is um, world renowned for youth sports, and I, I would like to continue to maintain um, basketball, soccer, baseball, everything else, and not repurpose any of our fields um, for a different purpose. Because we we are we are special, Braintree special that we have great youth sports, and I would really like to maintain that and that's all thank you all right we'll move right into the overall vision statements peter do you want to go first i don't know if you want to go but <laughs> can you go first i don't even know if i have notes on this And I may have more after incorporating some of the changes we made to the other five, four, five core themes, but I would just delete predominantly single family home. I feel that a lot of the things that the survey revealed is captured by uh, preserving uh, residential neighborhoods and that just sticks out to me as odd in that first sentence. David. I think uh, I agree with Peter on that. Um, overall, I agree with the, the general tenor of the vision statement. Um, but I am concerned that if we keep focusing only on language that uh, emphasizes single family homes, despite the fact that I've lived in one almost my entire life. Um, we're sending a message that's just not very welcoming. Um, so I think we should just strike that language entirely. Uh, with respect to the balance of the vision statement, I don't know that we have to limit um, what we're talking about here to the Manaticut River and uh, in particular, um, I have no problems with addressing the Manaticut River, but I certainly don't want to limit it to the only things that are mentioned here. So I kind of agree with the philosophy of using general language in this part of the um, document. Um, Yet I wouldn't be opposed to getting a little bit more specific with respect to um, how we deal with the fiscal health of the town by adding language uh, where we take on um, the generational obligation to spend the money that is necessary to deal with the infrastructure needs of the town. Um, you know, people lived here previously and built that high school 50 years ago. Somehow they came up with the money to do it. Um, and people who were going to the new schools that were built in Braintree 
60, 70 years ago, somehow the people of the, the town came up with the money to pay for those schools. For whatever reason, we just have not done that. And I think putting language in this vision statement about meeting our generational responsibility to the people of Braintree and the future residents of Braintree um, should be right there. All right, it's my turn. And, uh, and I believe Councillor Flaherty, she did a great job. And I'm not going to take credit for any of it, so I'm just going to let you read it when it comes your turn. So, um, thank you very much. I I agree. I think this um, tweaked, maybe a little bit wordsmith and expanded in some ways. Um, vision statement, um, I think, does kind of encompass what I what I feel like I've heard people say and how I feel I've read the survey results. I would say, as a follow up, maybe to this. Um, feels like we're having friction on this single family idea, whether it falls in the vision statement or it doesn't, whether or not this committee is understanding the will of the survey takers or like, I have, a, I guess, a question. Like, I don't see in reviewing any of the existing conditions reports or any of the survey data or like the stuff that was talked about at these meetings when we were listening to conversations. I didn't see like an overwhelming support for single family homes specifically. So if if I'm missing it and it's there, like I just, maybe I'm missing it. Like I think I heard a lot of different types of housing needed, especially housing that we might not have, like smaller homes for people starting out or people stepping in or people moving into out of their bigger homes. Um, so. I mean, I, I, do want to, I do want to follow the results of the survey. I'm just not seeing it. So um, I guess if I'm looking in the wrong place, please tell me. Thank you. I have a sheet if you want me to give it to you. It's, it shows the survey results. Is it something that we have tonight? No, it isn't. It's, well, it's, it is the same graph, but I mean, the graph shows that um, sing, single families are the- Which page is that on? Um, could you just pass that over? Page six? Yeah, and if you do a search on all the comments and you, you can search how many times single family was referenced, it was probably the number one comment, to be honest. It was 72 times. So, so this survey outreach, the Excel spreadsheet with all the comments, is that available on the website? How, how do you have access to Do we have access to that? It's in the Dropbox. We sent it a link. It's on the Dropbox? Oh, yeah. OK. Um, I will um, happily review that again. Um, and then what is this, this document here? That's just here? A, is a this summary also, of all the graphs. So is it this shows also on the, the Dropbox? The single family. Um, yes, of course. OK. Are these all related That's all the to survey. housing? Um, no. Specifically? That's a full survey okay. of all the um, each question. And then the housing is in there. And it shows you what was, why single family was number two. Actually, the number one highly interested in section was single family. So I don't know why you didn't see that. It's in the graph. I just, I'm not missing that people are wanting single families. I'm just missing the fact that it's like overwhelmingly so much that it needs to be called out in the way that it is in the vision statement. I'm all for, like, I think, I think our neighborhoods are beautiful and I think that everything we can do to preserve and protect that family-centered neighborhood, like I just, I struggle with calling out the single family just feeling more exclusive than I think we're trying to be, but I could be wrong. I could be totally misinterpreting it and everybody wants single family homes in this statement. I'm not here to, I'm here to listen and hopefully well, make the right choice. Well, if you don't want it in, you should just tell her that you can edit it out. No, I, I, I think yeah. the vision statement that, that um, Julia had handed out tonight, I think yeah. I, I do, um, I do um, support that. So thank you. Okay, so my thinking about the vision statement is that it's meant to be a, a broad, like a broad aspirational vision rather than a specific diagram of the future. So I think we should reserve specifics to the core themes outlined that we've already gone through. 
So, and I think even there, it's appropriate to be more specific than we are in the initial statement, but still, there's a lot of text that comes after each of these core themes in which we should discuss things with great specificity. So in the interest of making a document readable and sufficiently brief in order to be readable, it makes sense to begin with the broadest strokes and then move to the more specific components in the core themes and then move to the very great specificity later in the document. So for that reason, I think we should move predominantly single family home out because I added it in two places in the core themes. That's where I think it belongs. I, I added it to the portion about economic growth and I added it to the portion about housing. I think we should strike predominantly single family home and for the same reason we should strike and the Manadequate River. And it's not because I don't want to protect the Manadequate River, it's that I think a more appropriate term in that location is natural resources. So I would strike, and I would, after striking predominantly single family home, I would add welcoming, family centered, I would keep suburban community, and I would add prioritizing and protecting its residential neighborhoods because I know that that is a priority that every Braintree resident feels. Um, public schools I think we should keep. Uh, I would change commercial districts, commercial villages to business districts. Um, I particularly love the sentence People will be attracted to Braintree because they aspire to put down roots, raise a family, and belong to a supportive community as they age. I think that absolutely captures a lot about what people love about Braintree and the reason that they move here, or often the reason that they stay here after they have grown up here. I would add the one thing that the primary vision statement doesn't address has to do with uh, sustainability. So I would add the following sentence. Braintree will have an abundance of natural open space suitable for passive outdoor recreation and a strong program to reduce our municipal carbon footprint. I think that's an important enough concept that it should be folded into this open vision statement but not get too specific about spe really how that, we, that would be approached. And then the, the, what I would add is Braintree residents will be encouraged to collaboratively engage in town planning initiatives. Actually, that part is already there. Encouraged to collaboratively engage in town planning initiatives to ensure fiscal health and to guide economic growth and development initiatives. Because I think resident engagement is critical and I'm grateful for those of you who have come out tonight and especially for those of you who are even still here because that's a big commitment. I think resident engagement is essential and I think it should be extended to our fiscal health and our economic growth as well as our development initiatives. They really are all tied together and um, should be conceived of as a group. So, those are, I think that you can make those changes without departing from the spirit of the original draft. And I think it's stronger that way in terms of the context of the full document that it's a part of. Okay. I don't know how I follow that, but um, I think Julie did a great job um, making some edits. I, specifically like the um, prioritizing and protecting um, portion of, and then listing what we um, as a community think should be prioritized and protected. I like it too. Um, I would say 
though I would love to see, like I know you crossed, crossed out high quality public schools, I would like to see um, invest in high quality public schools, um, like just a little bit more emphasis. I feel like just saying public schools, like everybody's got them, but I feel like as a community, we need to invest in our public schools and um, flourishing business districts. Um, I just think I would add a little more language that, that ex like explains, gives it more um, weight. So that's the only thing I would say, but I think it is a nice, um, and it's, it's a nice vision statement. Thank you. Joe's turn. <laughs> I would agree with the three previous speakers. I think that they, they really hit it on the head and uh, really did articulate that in a more um, visionary statement. The spirit of the visionary statement, that is. Thank you. Raina. Um, I agree. I think Julia's right, captured almost every comment I had. There was one thing I had, and I don't know how you folks feel, but I had put in, you know, somewhere in here that Braintree will be a place that accommodates rich diversity. And I, I had that in there with, oh, and generational obligations. But that, I think we have that elsewhere. But I, I'm pretty comfortable with this. It ca I mean, almost every single one of my comments is incorporated in here. Which? Well, I had a comment in about, you know, that Braintree is a place that accommodates rich diversity. I had it in, in incorporated into one of the sentences. But, I, I mean, I. I don't think it needs to be there. There's a lot there. Liz. Okay, so the phrase predominantly single family home came from the 1998 master plan, I believe. But, I, and everybody knows how strongly I feel about that and how I feel so strongly about maintaining the suburban character of our town. I can totally agree with removing predominantly single ham family home from the overall vision statement provided that we keep it in the housing section. I, I can definitely live with that. And um, I think that Julia's comments were, were wonderful. Um, I agree that, you know, maybe we add a couple more things. I also wrote down my own little note, many natural resources instead of Manadequit River. And, um, the comments about the school being a little bit stronger, invest and maintain in high quality public schools, flourishing commercial villages. I think, I think that sounds like a great vision statement, overall vision statement. Justine. Oh, okay. Um, when I first saw the word uh, village, commercial village is what I'm excited about. Uh, when over the summer we visit the um, Oak, um, the Colonia in Williamsburg, my son, after an hour walking, she said, why are we here? I said, why? He said, just look like Braintree. So when I saw the, com when I saw the mission, the, um, has the village, com commercial village feeling, this is what I would like to keep so that when people come into Braintree, that's who we are, this is what our resident wants. It's a village feeling, not the overbuilt, high density uh, commercial building. And over where you have the supportive community, I would like to add supported, inclusive and diversified community because we always proud to be one of the inclusive community. When you first come into Braintree, you see our sign, and you see we are one of the Purple Heart communities, so I want to include those two statements in here um, to continue grow and support our community need. That's all I have. Does anyone in the public want to speak on this?
Kelly Moore, 46 Hollis Ave. In, in the spirit of non-specificity, we should just write, in 2033, Braintree will be a cool place to live. And stop. End of story. Leave it at that. We should just eliminate public schools. Let's not get specific about that. You know, business districts. Why even put that in there? It should be just assumed. Braintree will be a well-run, picturesque, predominantly single-family home, well, unless that's not what you want. What do you want? What do you want? Read the comments of what the residents said and follow them. Why should that have to be overemphasized? Some of them even voted for some of you. Remember that. Thank you. Thank you. Does that any yeah. I'll make it quick because I know everyone's tired. Chris Fitzgerald. No, it's okay, complain. take your time. That's okay. No, I just wanted to say I don't go to these things and now I'm going. Because you got me hooked. <laughs> but I don't understand why you can't see why we would not want to emphasize single family homes. Who wants to come to a community where they're hiding things? Come to Braintree. We have multi-diversity, multi-high-rise condos. Who's gonna come? I don't wanna be another Brockton. I don't wanna be a Quincy. I don't wanna be a Randolph. I wanna be Braintree. Braintree is proud of what we've built here long before a lot of people that were in this room were here. We need to sustain that. You've heard, you've seen in black and white the votes, the voices of the people that brought you to be in this position. Represent them, do your jobs. Thank you. Just please state your name and address. Sure, Megan uh, Blanchard Boulevard, Braintree. So um, I am, big surprise, very supportive of removing the language of predominantly single family home. Um, it, to me, it seems very exclusive, seems very specific. It seems the opposite of inclusive, which we claim to be. Um, we welcome all families, I hope. And I think, you know, limiting again, this is 10 years from now, and no one's saying, well-run, picturesque, high-rise metropolis. You know, we're just saying picturesque, well-run, suburban community. I feel like you either feel this way or you don't, um, but I feel this way very strongly, so here I am. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Please, come on up. I just want to uh, echo her sentiments here. My name is Catherine. I live in Braintree. Um, I, I don't understand this assumption that multi, I'm not necessarily multi-families, but two families, which are historically very much in keeping with World War, you know, post-World War I, post-World War II, picturesque, you know, servicemen coming home to their families. I mean, there's very much a sense of community there and it, they're not a blight on the neighborhood. It's not like this 10-story high rise. We're not talking about dense path. I, I mean, and it, I just think there's this weird um, assumption that it's like all or nothing. That, well, you can have your picturesque single family homes and you know, where people, I mean, only very, very rich people can afford to loo, live near the Braintree Tea, it, live near either of the train stations. <laughs> Um, you know, you can live near Holbrook or Randolph, I suppose, if you say, and, and picking up on a comment someone made earlier, no one can afford to move to Braintree right out of college. I mean, you have to say for a very long time, and even then, unless you have a lot of money, you're not going to be living in the choicest neighborhoods. So I, I just, it's kind of strange to me, this assumption that uh, two families are a blight on the neighborhood. They, I don't think they necessarily are. I mean, there are a lot of beautiful homes that are converted. And I, I think it does sort of smack of a certain kind of snobbery and exclusivity
that isn't very welcoming at all. And I mean, I filled out that survey. It was very odd to me because I wouldn't even know, have known about it except my sister told me and I went looking for it. It's not like it landed in my mailbox. So I don't, I, I'm surprised you got that many people to respond at all. But it, it just seems like there's this assumption that only a certain, that two families and even multi-families are somehow ugly or, or, or a blight on Braintree, and I don't think that's the case at all. I mean, certainly you want to limit high rises and, and very large multifamilies. Um, I don't know, I'm, I feel like maybe I'm not being as coherent as I could be, but yeah, I, I just think that seems a little snobby to me, and um, I'm not the only person who's made that comment. But it, it seems, to, and there's a lot of discussion too about, um, and maybe some can clarify this for me, well, if you build elderly, elderly housing, then the elderly will move in and that will free up housing stock for, you know, I, I don't, I think only really well-established people are, you know, can afford to, to help their kids. And I don't know that elderly housing is going to free up enough single family homes that, I mean, how many people here have a kid that can afford to live in Braintree? I don't think there are many at all, really. Um, and I, I'm wondering too, is Braintree elderly housing only available to elderly uh, Braintree residents? Or is there an assumption that that's just sort of the way it will evolve? Because you know, someone from Hanson wouldn't necessarily put their mom in There's Braintree. There's senior housing and then there's over 55 housing. So they're two different things. Okay, so. so senior housing sometimes, I think, I, I could be wrong, but sometimes it's subsidized, right? Like um, so sometimes that's subsidized. We have some areas, um, Logan, I think is the name of it, That's that has, right? Oh, good, thank you. Yeah, um, <laughs> if I may make a note here. Um, we have uh, a lot of subsidized uh, senior housing in Braintree, and you need to make an application, and you get on a wait list. Residents uh, get priority, but non-residents can also apply. Yeah, so, so typically people that are looking for that, they'll typically try to get on a couple lists because they're multiple years, two, three, four, five or six in some communities. It just seems unrealistic to me to think that any sort of plus, you know, 55 plus or elderly housing will free up, you know, smaller, <coughs> theoretically affordable homes for, you know, couples that are just starting out. That just seems pretty unrealistic to me. It does seem much more realistic that, you know, for someone that's lived in Braintree a long time and they have a decent sized house, nice lot, big setback, that they would be able to maybe make some room for their kid by converting. And I, I think the people in, and I, I do pick up on the fact that there were 72 unsolicited comments emphasizing single family. But I, I do wonder if those people aren't assuming that those evil um, multifamilies or two families are going to be new construction and they're going to be you know somehow going to get you know wedged into these neighborhoods and I, I think that that might be a, you know a wrongheaded assumption. Anyways, um, thanks for listening. Thank that's, you. That's Thank my you. comment. Yep, it's me again. Uh, Bill Crockin, Manatee Avenue. Um, I, I'd just like to put one question to you. If you were going to sell your house in Braintree, would you be looking to help the buyer by selling your house cheaply? Or would you want to get the top dollar for your property when you sell your house? Well, if you have multi-family units, they're not going to sell one unit cheaply and sell two of them to pay off their debt. They're going to sell all three units for a lot of money. That's what they've been doing in Jamaica Plain, what they've been doing in Dorchester. Um, the way builders make their money, I'm a builder, the way I would want to make my money is I'd want to get top dollar for each unit that I sold. That's not really helping out people looking to buy low-income housing or can't afford a single-family house. They're going to pay $700,000 to one floor of a three-family. They're getting a million dollars in South Boston for that. So I, I, it's not that 
anyone's anti multifamily is just it's it's only saturating the piece of property that it goes on and that's what builders are looking to do is oversaturate the property these multifamily units <coughs> go on and that is my concern and, and from people I've spoken to that's their concern too don't oversaturate the land thank you thank you Uh, Carrie Fitzgerald, 15 Lavolia. Yeah. Um, I am actually a new homeowner, I'm 28 years old. Uh, I just bought in the Highlands, and I think that it would be actually detrimental to take out the single family home um, statement because currently in the town of Braintree, that is a fact. It is predominantly single family. I don't think that anyone is calling multifamilies or um, two families evil or anything like that, and I don't think that it's intended to be exclusive, but I do think that it's specific enough that it kind of blocks people's agendas in the future if they try to uh, overhaul the spirit of the town. And I think that that's why it should remain in the statement. Thank you. Thank you. John Fabiano, Putnam Ave. Uh, normally I just like to be a wallflower at these meetings, but I feel like I've been here four hours and I should just speak. I also thought it was just a meeting about semantics, but it seems like now everyone's just voicing their own opinions about housing, so I'm just gonna give mine, um, which is just that I'm like, I think neighborhoods are sacred and they should remain single family. Um, but I also think we should be able to build if, like this town is effed financially, it seems like. So I just think that if you, you know, shake the bushes and you can't make things work with what's currently here for commercial space or um, like I just like you need to build it just seems like I don't know like and I don't want high rises either but like there's got to be parts of this town where you can put apartments condos meet 40b do something I don't know it just feels like like where the hell's the money in this town like where's it going to come from I don't know Thank you. Does anyone else want to speak? No? Okay. So, does anyone want to make a motion to close the meeting? Oh. <laughs> Jen? I just request something. So, <clears throat> I know we were talking about the next steps. Yes. And uh, while I don't want to, uh, I hate to ask you all to have a, another meeting, and I know you talked about maybe we could just do it on the 15th. But I'm a little concerned that if we try to finish doing, you know, the rest of this work, which is revising the statement, which is not an easy thing to do, um, before we're trying to present it to the planning board and city and town council on the 15th, we'll just run out of time and we won't be able to make a coherent presentation that night. So I would like to suggest, and it's not really my place, I'm not on the committee and I don't work for the town, but. I think that you need an additional meeting, and I'm happy to do that pro bono. Um, if we could just, I would love to just find a time, because I think it's important to just finish what we're trying to do here tonight so that we can actually be prepared when we go to the 15th session and present a vision statement that this group is feeling like really represents what, what has been discussed tonight. Could we do December 1st? Oh, Raina, do you not want to? No, I Okay. We just want to confirm that we can find a room on that date. <coughs> you want to confirm? We can, if we, we can, can make sure we have a room. room. Can you, oh. I'm pulling up the calendar. Okay. Please bear with me for one minute. Thursday. It's two weeks from today. I cannot do the first. Can you do the 30th? No. 29th? I could do the 28th that week. Okay. 28th, no, no, it's gotta be November. November 28th. Yeah. 28th. Is that enough time? 
yeah, I don't feel like we're going to do work between then and now. I think what we're going to do is continue this and move okay. into revisions. But we can send just the way we've written it. Yeah. We can send this out so it's public. The committee has all these comments. I yeah. I feel like we have something to say. What are we saying, 7 o'clock? On the 28th? Yeah. Maybe earlier. Is 6 o'clock possible again? And I won't be late this time. <laughs> This room is available, Madam Chair. All right, so let's, November 28th at 6 p.m. Please come back, audience members. <laughs> Completely agree. That, at the, on that date, we want to actually agree on what revisions. So we want to go through the comment, and I want to actually redline the document in front of you. Um, you know, theme by theme and the overall and have everybody say, yes, that's what we agree to. Do, do you think we could come on that date with like one, two, and three almost done? I know there's a couple of contradictions, but there's not that many. What time? Maybe. I'm hesitant to, to try to make any executive decisions, so um, I could take a stab at making red lines based on what I think you all agree on. And then we could look at it again so that we yeah. don't have to like start from scratch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did we pick a time, Madam Chair? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Okay. I'm just making sure I look it up. Six o'clock <laughs> to ten. <laughs> Eleven. No one's gonna kick us out now. So um, someone has to make a motion. I will make a motion to adjourn for the evening. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you, audience. Thank you.